There isn't a racist bone in my body. I'm yeah. just attacking that. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, I get people, it. Yeah. This is the, the Have yeah. you ever had to give a disclaimer for anyone else before? No, 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 no. Come on. He's the first. I've had some, <laughs> I've had some people on here. I've had some people on there. You probably had what gangbangers on, yeah, killers. Yeah, there we go. Um, Never ex coppers. Yeah, ex coppers, killers, you murderers. On? You could even have paedophiles on. No one gets disclaimer. No, no disclaimer. You. Tommy Robinson. My mum's an Irish immigrant. All my friends are St. Lucian, Jamaican, Bulgarian, Italian. We're all sons of immigrants, yeah? They want to hide them. And when I say I'm not racist, I don't hate every Muslim either, just to get that clear as well. Yeah, because that was my other thing. And then that was worse. From the start, we were very clear of our message. Yeah. We were against Nazis and all that. We'd done so much, we set fire to swastikas. It was never about anything other than confronting radical Islam. At every single demonstration, a non-white person spoke. You wouldn't know that, because all you'd have been shown a picture of is four or five young, angry-looking white lads that were cropped from their photos and pumped around the world. Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. This year's going to be a big one. I can't lie, I've got a lot of big interviews lined up, like, week after week. It's actually a bit mad, and it's going to be a lot to maintain and keep up with, but I'm going to try my best, um, bring a lot of good content. Just as a disclaimer, me personally, I will sit with anybody, just to let you know, because I know some people are probably sitting here thinking right now, what the fuck are you doing? I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Go on. I actually went on um, Instagram and just said, yo, I'm going to sit down with Tommy Robinson. Yeah, tell me the feedback. And there was some crazy stuff that people were saying. <laughs> That, might, me, been, that might be the lads outside the car as I was walking in. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> nah, so for me, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'll sit down with anyone. Um, I'm very, like, factual. I'm not an uh, emotionally led person. I'm like, let's talk facts and what's actually being said. Do you know what I mean? But um, anyway, let's just... Have you ever had to give a disclaimer for anyone else before? No, 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 no. Come on. He's the first. And I've had some, I've had some on. people on here. <laughs> I've had some people on there. You probably had what gangbangers on, yeah, killers. Yeah, there we go. Um, Never ex coppers. Had... Yeah, ex coppers, what, what killers, you murderers. Under? You could even have paedophiles on. No one gets disclaimer. No, no disclaimer. You, Tommy Robinson, first guy. It's insane, though. No? Yeah. And what's he done? Spoke about a, spoke about a religion. Well, let, let's, let's let's get into it. So yeah, introduce <laughs> yourself. Like, so yeah, yeah, I'm Tommy Robinson. But I'm not, as many of you will know, because everyone would like to jump in and say his real name is Stephen Yaxley Lennon. Yeah, I've heard you got a few names. I've got a lot. Yeah. Wayne King, that was one of the first names I used, which was just banter when I started the Defence League, because when I started this, I didn't expect it to blow up the way it blew up. So originally I started I started in 2009, was my first, no, my first activism was in 2004. But for what anyone would know me as, which was leader of the English Defence League, I started uh, the organisation in 2009 right. in Luton. After a soldier's homecoming parade where soldiers were attacked, <clears throat> they were called Butchers of Basra, Baby Killers, um... Do you know, as I progress along as well, my mind's changed a lot on a lot of things mm. with where we're at. We'll get onto that. But, um, but yeah, so I started an organisation called the English Defence League. I was 25. Within six months, I was leading the biggest street protest movement Europe's ever seen. Crazy. How much numbers was it? Uh, we had th thousands, up to 10,000 at certain, certain rallies. We were mm. hitting rallies in the streets and it was just blown. It went on to the world and news. We bought... We brought a lot of issues to the forefront that needed to be spoken about. Mm. People could question our... our our tactics but um as i said we didn't plan it so i was working on the building site and then bang so what one day you just woke up and said what, what was it that made you even think of creating there, that there movement? was a soldier's home i mean I'm, I'm from luton town yeah mm. when i was born in luton we had one mosque we've now got over 40 so i've grown up in the, one of the most multicultural towns in britain yeah so i've experienced every culture every religion everyone if you line up all my friends, we're all, my mum's an Irish immigrant, all my friends are St. Lucian, Jamaican, Bulgarian, Italian, we're all sons of immigrants, yeah? But I, what I'd seen through growing up in school was there was a difference, because you, ha you didn't have the white playground or the black playground or anything like that, you had the Muslim playground and the non-Muslim playground. Oh, really? You walked into the dinner hall, you have whites, blacks, Indians, all sitting, integrated, in, mixed, every group, if you go to Luton, every group of white lads will be with black lads. Every group of black lads will be with white lads. It's not exclusive, yeah? Everyone's integrated pretty well, apart from the Islamic community, which was the Pakistani community. So I, when I was uh, early on, I, I just put it down to them being Pakistanis, culturally different, aggressive, hostile, and in numbers. That's what I witnessed growing up, yeah? And then we had the Soldiers Homecoming Parade. You have to remember that Luton was the launch pad for the 7-7 attacks. It's where they come. They got the train from Luton to launch their bombs. The fertiliser bomb, bomb plot, the Stockholm bomber, 
the I think the CIA named Luton as the epicenter for terrorist activity within Europe. Yeah, right. and that's my town. So I'm born there. I'm brought up there. I grew up in that town. Many of the men you'd know, you, you'd have seen on the news as terrorists. I know them. I knew them. Yeah, say all these different names. Al Al Majrudin, which become a prescribed terrorist organisation, it's now a prescribed terrorist organisation. Sixty percent of the terrorists in jail serving prison time were members of this organisation. Right. But for decades, they were setting up stall and had their head office in my town. So as I'm growing up, these men are on our streets, radicalising, promoting hate against everyone that's not Muslim. They're, and that hate results in terrorism, in, in violence, in attacks. So when they, find, when they attacked the soldiers in 2009, that's when I said, enough's enough. Like, at what point... At what point how much tolerance can you show in tolerance? Because that's all we're seeing with this, with this group and these extremists. And um, yeah, so I set up the English Defence League, which went... Oh, so what was the... Because um, everyone has like a mission statement of some form, right? Yeah, we had a mission statement, goal? yeah. Our, our goal was to, to uh, tackle Islam. I have changed it. Uh, we started off against radical Islam, yeah? Because I didn't know that much about Islam right. at the time. So my goal was to tackle radical Islam and to tackle al Mujahideen, this, this terrorist organisation. For example... They were in Luton Town Centre and they were promoting and we, we formed the English Defence League and we, we went to where their stall was, Don right. Miller's Bakery. Before the English Defence League, we were called the United People of Luton. We'd done two demonstrations, the UPL. And we went there and they were then for that one Saturday, they weren't there because right. of our, act, our, our, our actions. Then I watched the group and they were doing an Islamic roadshow. So after attacking our soldiers in Luton, I'm against the war. Yeah, I, was against, I was against all the, the British foreign policy. We got onto that as well, but... I was against the war, but they attacked in that regiment that that they attacked that day in Luton. Scott Muntridge was twenty, mid, early twenties, and he died. He died tra- on the training for that that regiment. Yeah, Michael Swain was nineteen. He lost his legs. These are the kids that we knew growing up. They spat in one of their mother's faces. Yeah, so f- for us, the, our soldiers were given the freedom of the sea. They weren't out there killing a- Afghans or, or Iraqis or any of those conflicts. They were training the Afghan army, yeah? That's what they were out there doing, that regiment were, that, that, that they attacked. If you want to attack the, our government, go attack our government, yeah? I don't care. Most people wouldn't. But you're attacking the soldiers, their families, spitting in their faces. And um, so that was the final thing. So what we decided to tackle that group and we started protest. But then after that, the Islamic Roadshow was in Birmingham straight after this, yeah? And you can watch this footage. I use it in a speech I gave at the Oxford University. A young boy, 11 years old, was shopping in the town centre. Yeah? And he was stopped. This is by Anjem Chowdhury, who, you know Anjem Chowdhury? I've heard of him. Yeah, he's a, he's a terrorist. He's just come out after another terrorist. He's the, the main radical for Europe, really. Yeah, the main face of it. And he got this 11-year-old boy up without his parents' permission, and he converted to Islam on stage. And hundreds of radical jihadists are screaming, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. So we watched it from Luton, because it was just a Luton issue, remember? We were just targeting this extremist gang in Luton. And I remember watching it thinking, oh, someone's going to say something about this, yeah? Some politician's going to interact, or someone's going to... Only because what my knowledge of Islam was that if you, convert, if you leave Islam, it's punishable by death. You know that? No, I didn't know. Oh, no, so you can't leave Islam. <laughs> you can't change your mind. You can't decide you have a reckoning. You can't convert to Christianity. You cannot do it. Under Islamic law, you're dead. Yeah. So in Saudi Arabia, they will kill you. You'll be executed. Anywhere that's governed by Islamic law, you'll be murdered. It's why apostates in this country, many of them who decide to change their mind or decide to f- find Christianity, find you, decide to change their ideas, yeah? that's, that's all it is, they have to live in fear, many of them, yeah, for the rest of their lives. Right. So... I saw them converting this kid thinking, nah, like they cannot convert. And, let, and could you imagine the uproar if a load of Christians or a load of Jews or a load of anyone converted a young 11 year old Muslim boy in a town centre? Do you know what they re- Do you know what they had? The banner behind it was Jesus was a Muslim. So uh, while they're converting this kid, they had a big banner saying Jesus was a Muslim. This group used to troll everyone. Anjem Chowdhury was a professional troll. Like some of it, uh, uh, even my mate, my mate said they were doing interviews with him. And my mate was a journalist. And he said, when they met him, he said, can you count to 10 to Anjem Chowdhury? And he goes, one, two, three, four, seven, seven, nine, eleven. Yeah. Wow. He's just taking the piss. But this group were taking the piss. For decades, they were taking the piss. Yeah? So at some point, it's got to stop. And the English Defence League was the, the, 
the end to say, no, you're not doing it anymore. And um, the burning of poppies, I don't know if you saw that. No. So our rem- Remembrance Day, an important day where yeah. we remember everyone who's fallen for this country, whether it be Commonwealth fighters, whether whoever it is, yeah, that's, that's died, sacrificed 88,000 Sikhs um, in the World War. Anyone who's died fighting for this country, we remember them. They got at 11 o'clock, on the 11th hour, 11 minute, when we remember it, they set up a stall, set up a big thing in London and got huge poppies this big and set fire to them, screaming, burn, British soldiers, burn. All the things that, like, if we wanted to protest even near a mosque, we'd get shut down. Yeah? If we wanted to protest anything inflammatory, you'd get shut down. This lot just weren't, had never been shut down, had never been told no. It's why they weren't a prescribed terrorist organisation. It's why they were radicalised, and it's why extremism becomes such a problem in this country, because no one told them no. And until the English Defence League formed and there was a resist- resistance, it then, it then gave the authorities a difficulty uh, across the way, and they started, in the end, they had to criminalise the gang. They outlawed them. They all put them in jail. All of them in jail now. Okay. So, so when you, you know, started EDL for you, you, what was your mental for? Like, did you think of like pros and cons to this? Because obviously, you're still now no. facing. You're not part of it anymore. No, I didn't. Th- I didn't. I just thought this ain't getting away with this anymore. Mm. Yeah. And to be honest, I was of a. So at that time, I was young. Um, so you're 25, right? 25 at that time. Yeah. I'd gone through a few mad stages in my life. So I'd, I'd. I'd done an apprenticeship when I left school. All my friends were into tr- all my friends were in crime. Mm. The majority of them, yeah. All of them getting in trouble. I stuck the right path in life. Still hung around with all the lads, but managed to keep myself out of many scrapes. And then, um, and then I had my first ever offence. I went to jail for it when I was twenty. Lost all my job, lost my career, I lost everything. And I gravitated then to the football football hooligan scene. If I'm honest, as a young okay. lad. So this then become my passion. My passion was making money previously. And success, which I've done very well at by that young age. When I was young, when I started the English Fence League, between me and my partner at the time, we had seven properties, two businesses. Wow. Um, yeah, we're doing well. So who do you speak... Like, at that time, are you just doing this by yourself? Or is this something that you've, like, spoken to friends or family about? Like, at this time... T- going at that, for this. Yeah, at that time in Luton, I shook my cousin's hand at the time, who stood by my side the whole way. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, because I wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise, because... I knew that wherever I had, because this was a thing where I knew if you put, you can't put one foot into this, you know, they're going to come for us. And I knew they're going to come for us. When I say they, I mean terrorists, extremists, radicals, gangs. Um, you can't, w- growing up in Luton, I knew what you could and couldn't talk about and who you couldn't, couldn't, couldn't confront. And we're about to confront Al-Qaeda, basically, at the time. This is Al-Qaeda and we're about to stick it on them. And mm-hmm. with that, it's going to come problems. So yeah, we made an agreement. And then we, um, and then we bought a microscope on that organisation like they've never seen. So, what point did you leave? I left. Why in two, did you leave? I left in 2015. I run the organisation. Bearing in mind, yeah. So, for all your viewers who have ne- who have just heard and and listened to the mainstream headlines and the media, or listened to the news, <laughs> stop listening to it. Right? If you think about this, yeah, they lied to you about Afghanistan. They lied to all of us. Yeah? They lied to us about Iraq. Weapons of mass destruction. Million Muslims dead. They were lying to us about Syria. Assad. Assad was the bad guy. He needs taken out. They're lying now about Ukraine. Every headline you've seen about me. At the English Defence League, when we formed the first English Defence League demonstration, we went to Birmingham. We had victims that read, Nigerian Christians, we stand with you. Yeah? It was never about anything other than confronting radical Islam. At every single demonstration, a non-white person spoke. You wouldn't know that because all you'd have been shown a picture of is four or five young, angry looking white lads that were cropped from their photos and pumped around the world. The, the manipulation used, and we, I hold my hands up as an organisation, we didn't help ourselves at the time, but we were very clear on where we stood, which is why you just said you had a, on the front page of the paper was a boy you went to school with who was a black yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was on the website. Though. On the website, yeah. Was okay, it was on the website. website. Yeah. At the time, that was official. It was official. One, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. So, well, we had a one of our leaders was Sikh from the start. Yeah. Okay. We went through an education process for many in the United Kingdom, which shouldn't be our job. Yeah. Mm. To educate people on what Sikhs have done and who Sikhs are as a community, as a, as a migrant community, the the pros, the benefits, what they've done for this country, the promises made to them by Winston Churchill. We we actually made it very clear. We had a, a we had a Hindu division, a Sikh division. We had many non-white members and non-white followers, and every single demonstration, every single demonstration, we had a non-white person speak. And I had 
I don't know if you've watched Marshall Junior's speech. I was hated by the genuine far right. You see the Nazis, the real... I'm a race traitor, apparently, yeah? And because I've always said I'm from Luton Town. Mm. I'm not from some <laughs> exclusively white area, yeah? That's not me. That's not the upbringing I've had. Yeah, because Luton is quite multicultural, right? Yeah, total multicultural. It's yeah. not like a white area. There right? isn't one. No, whites, no, no. whites are a minority in Luton. Mm. But I've grown up and I had, luckily, so when the English Fence League formed, everyone knew me. I was already known around town. Everyone knew me. Everyone knew I weren't a racist. And everyone knew I didn't have a problem, that my problem was with the Pakistani mm. section of the town that had absolutely taken liberties with everyone. The grooming, which we can get onto, but the rape of girls. The, in fact, I dug up, if you look at my Oxford Union speech, I made leaflets, my first leaflets when I was 21 years old. I watched the Beslam school massacre. Do you know what that was? No. no. So in Russia, in Beslam, um, jihadis surrounded a school. They went into the school, picture this, yeah? They went into the school, took hundreds of children hostage. The parents will find out. Parents will rush outside the school. This is when I first started looking at Islam. Parents were outside the school and then they're listening as these, as these animals are massacring their kids. So they're butchering the children while the parents are outside screaming, listening. Yeah, I remember watching that thinking, what is this? Like, and I remember watching and I see four Pakistanis in Luton in a chicken shop talking on YouTube saying that a, a, an attack like that would be justified in Luton. Uh, justified like that in England. So straight away I thought, I need to know what this mindset is that thinks this, this is acceptable. So then I started researching Islam, researching, and, and I made, at that time, when that happened, I made uh, leaflets, and they were made front page of our local newspaper. Yeah? The, what I said in those, in those leaflets in 2004 as a 21-year-old man has not changed to what I say now as a 40-year-old man. It said, whites and blacks are being racially targeted in this town. Yeah? Our daughters and our women are being attacked. They're being violently attacked. That, that, that one section of the town, which can pump heroin for every single shop going, yeah, driving their Lamborghinis, driving their Ferraris without any police, pro any police prosecution in comparison. We are treated with iron fists. They're treated with kid gloves. Yeah? And this has to stop. So I'd done that when I was 21. It's before the English Defence League. It was my first, and I called it Ban the Loot and Taliban. And, um, and the knock-on effect was that I was targeted by all the, all the drug gangs. Mm. Uh, we have a gang in Luton called the Gambinos, the, Pakis the Pakistani gang called the Gambinos. And I named them. In the, I named them. When I've done these leaflets, I thought, yeah, I'm, I am naming you, yeah? Mm. I'm naming you. You're, you're pumping heroin into young girls. You're prostitute. And, and I actually say in those leaflets, it, that's, that's not 20 years ago. I say in those leaflets, they're prostituting. They're using drugs as a weapon to get the young girls, the kids, the kids, their two kids, 12, 13. It happened to a cousin of mine. And then they're prostituting them. And this was something that no one else is doing. I've grown up in Lewin, yeah? There aren't groups of young black lads that are pimping young girls that are 15 and 14, that are drugging them. I've seen the grooming. I've seen the sexual attacks. We've all, we've all witnessed it. And everyone in Luton will know someone that's been affected by it. Mm. So, yeah, that was... And then that was where, from the start, we were very clear of our messaging. Yeah. We were against Nazis and all that. We burnt... As we started, well, I, got, I, took, we, I got about 20 lads, yeah? Yeah. We met in Luton. We made a big flag. It was a swastika. Right? And one of my mates, two lads just got out of jail. And, one of them, and I, said to them, I said, lads, we need, we need a few lads tonight. Yeah? We've got to send a message to certain people that are trying to affiliate with us. So they said, all right, what are we doing? And I'll send you the link for this afterwards. You can watch. It's a funny video, yeah? So we all meet up, and my mate's come in, and he's just pulled, he's with two lads, two of his mates. Yeah? And he said, look, we just need to go make this quick video. So they don't really know what's going on. And this is on BBC News night. And we're in a we we had access to a disused warehouse that we was using as our HQ to make our videos. This is for the English Defence League, where we'd make all our placards and banners. We'd be using this big big derelict building in town centre, and we're in there, and and you can see. So we're all up there, balaclava up. We've got ten black lads, ten white lads, and we're all wearing balaclavas. And one of my mates, black, a lad, he he didn't really want to be no, sh shown seen. Black lad, yeah, black kev. So I'll give him a white t shirt. I'll give him a black t shirt. <laughs> so he's seen his name. No, no, it's so clear. It's so, it's, but as everyone's, as, as the journalist is going upstairs saying we're going to meet the English Defence League. Yeah. So my mate gets up to the top of the stairs with two, black, two, two of his mates. And as they turn around, there's about 20 lads in balaclavas holding a swash flag. Yeah. The other two lads who ain't really got a clue to what's going on turn around and go, what the fuck? <laughs> and you can see them darting their way back down the stairs as the journalists come up. They think they've been set up on some race Crazy. thing. But, but um, we've done so much. We set fire to swastikas. Uh, we had, um, do you know Nazi Nick McGregor? Look up Nazi Nick McGregor, yeah? Mm. Remember, this is all for me. I've gone from... This is very interesting. Sorry to cut yeah. you out, but yeah. like, <clears throat> there's an assumption that you're racist. Yeah, yeah, of course. And you hate like every like race is race right so I'm, I'm part of the black race you're yeah. the white race 
You're just saying right now you're burning swastikas, which are like Nazis, right? Bruv, I've, I've gone... I, there isn't a racist bone in my body. I'm yeah? just attacking that. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, yeah, no, I get people, it. Yeah. This is the, the thing. The assumption so you're given... to sit yeah. with you and hear it. So I'm just you're saying, the same, what you're saying. Just like you're told the vaccine yeah. works. That, that, <laughs> just like you're told the all thing, these things. People was messaging me like, violate him, he's racist. And I said to them... And by the way, I'm a factual person. I said, if you can show me what he said is racist, I'll actually pull it up to him okay, and say, yeah. yo... What have you said? What did they find you? What did they find no, you? No, I'm not going to lie. There was nothing. <laughs> they didn't like, find you nothing. There was nothing. He's racist because the media said he's racist. Why do the media want to sound racist so you stop listening and stop all, and stop listening to the, mm. the problems we're talking about are real problems and they want to hide them. They want to hide them. And when I say I'm not racist, I don't hate every Muslim either, just to get that clear as yeah, well. Yeah, because that was my other thing as well. No, it's not what, so you're saying radical. No, so I started off it? radical Islam was my problem, yeah? Okay. Islam is my problem. Islam is radical, yeah? Okay. My, learning, my learning as I've gone on to understand what Islam is. But Islam is an idea, yeah? Mm-hmm. So I could, ha- if I hated Christianity, would you think I hate every Christian? No. No, you're an atheist. You don't like Christianity, yeah? I don't like Islam, right? That doesn't mean I hate every Muslim. And if I get on that, if I get on that, um, and I've got, I've got three children, um, and one of my best friends, Sully, yeah? Black, Kenyan, Muslim, yeah? Interesting. Yeah, uh, great lad, mm-hmm. right? And so for, for people to understand, I've done this with the BBC. In fact, I've done it with so many people so they could witness my friendship groups, yeah? To see there's a lot of people I have love for. They're not white. Yeah? Yeah. Some of them are Muslims, right? Mm. But that doesn't mean I can't have an opinion on what Islam is. So what's their take? How do they feel <laughs> about your opinion on Islam? Um, Muslim friends? Yeah. Um, many of them still carried on shaking my ha- hand over the years, yeah? Some of them, some of them fell out of me. Um, NASA fell out of me. You watching NASA? NASA fell out of me over when I wrote a Quran. I wrote a Quran. He said that was the final straw. You wrote a Quran. Enough's enough, yaks. <laughs> yeah, I, I wrote a Quran. It's a best-selling Quran. It's called Muhammad's Quran, Why Muslims Kill for Islam. It's, it, it's understanding Islam and putting, um, putting the verses in a chronological order. Because if you pick up the Quran, one thing Muhammad said one day is next to something he said 20 years later. Now, abrogation in Islam, whatever Muhammad said later in his life supersedes what he said earlier. So there are peaceful verses, yeah? But in, in, in Muhammad's first 10 years, he had about 150 followers when he was going around preaching peace. Then he introduced slavery, violence, jihad, murder, barbarianism. He, and then he had his, 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 his ideology, which went through the roof and right. his following. So he's, he's a, he was a great warrior. So, yeah, so I wrote, and some, many Muslim friends fell out me over that. But many Muslims, which you'd be surprised with, um, which I've been surprised with as well, um, take it pretty well. Mm. My, my, most of my day to day you might have seen a couple of little clips of me getting punched in the nose things like that but um, per se I travel around every day I think there was one uh, not even a punch in the nose I think he was on like he was abroad or something like that and like someone put like a camera in your face and was saying something this was years ago I don't know it yeah there's ago, been a few man I can imagine but per se I walk around everywhere on my own mm. and yeah, you came here on your own I'm on my own yeah yeah it's just an interesting um, thing because as I said a lot of people are under the illusion that A you're racist you hate blacks, you hate all Muslims. Nah. Take it as you will. He's telling you himself. I'm telling himself. I, don't, like, I, I do, you know I, mean? I stand by, I stand by where I am on Islam. Yeah? I stand by my views on Islam. I'm never going to apologise for them. I'm never going to back down on them. I wholeheartedly understand what, my, what I'm talking about of Islam. So I understand when I talk out against Islam, yeah? I understand why some young Muslims will hate me. If I was a young Muslim, I'd punch me in the face. When I, when I was 19, 20, if I'd have seen the equivalent of me, I'd have, I'd have took a swipe at me. Yeah? Mm. I understand that. With young black lads, I think, what? What's mm. your problem? Oh. I, 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 and I, get, I didn't help myself with the BLM when I went on the rant. We can get on to that. Yeah. About Black Lives Matter. You actually done an interview with one of my friends there that time. Sarah Garvey. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I got yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. You done, I remember you done it. I actually watched it back in the day. Well, mate, I was worried, ago. man. Do you know when I was doing that? Because I went Why? to Brixton for that. <coughs> oh, was that video in Brixton that you filmed it? Yeah, the second one. It was, uh, is it Big John? Um, so I got, So basically, I made a video saying, I'll debate anyone. And this is when it was all blew up, didn't it? It all yeah, blew up. I need to try to find the video so I can yeah. post it. So yeah, it's so Sarah like, Garvey. Yeah. So I got invited to Brixton and again, went on my own. No, I didn't actually. I took a friend who I met, a friend from jail, um, who's a black lad from down those ways. So I messaged him saying, look, bruv, I'm in a predicament here. Yeah? I've gone on a rant. I'll tell you this, do you want to know the story about when I went on the rant? Go on. So I'd been up in Barrow covering a alleged grooming scandal. A young white girl had said she'd been raped by lots of Muslim men, yeah? I'd gone up there for a week trying to investigate it as a journalist. It actually turns out in my eyes, the girl's lying. In your eyes? Yeah. Okay. Um, the girl's lying. There's a court case coming out soon. Um, Which is once again, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. 
this is just not him being biased like you're actually saying there was a No, I went up there. Do you know I went up there? And as I walked yeah. into his I walked into his geezer's house, uh, Mohammed. So I turned up, I started asking lots of questions, I found out lots of suspicious stuff about the girl and her family. Mm. Um and then I, so then I would reach out to the Muslim men that would be in there. Bearing in mind that I went, uh, one, one lad turned up with an English lad who, who was from London and he said, Tommy, I'll follow everything you do, bruv. I'm telling you now, this man's a good man. Yeah. His business has been destroyed Crazy. because of these allegations. Yeah. These aren't allegations of, so I face allegations of racism. Yeah. Different, and I don't like it. Yeah. But when I went into this Muslim fella's house, I turned up and I'm walking in and someone shouts, you fucking racist. Yeah. And then some girl shouts at him, you paedophile. I said, bruv, I won that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I won that one, man. But as I went in this house, I sat down, this son was there, 16, had to leave college. And I sat and saw what had happened to them. And, I, and I, bearing in mind, I've already found out five, six things that don't add up with this girl. So then I, I thought, do you know, and I, what I said to him, he goes, why are you here? I said, mate, if you're innocent, if this isn't true, yeah, mm. I want to be the person that lets people know it's not yeah, true. You yeah. should of all people. Yeah, uh, and people will listen to me. So yeah. in this town, people will listen to me yeah, it, on this issue. And so far, I've seen this, this, this. I've seen five, six different things. And, it's a, and then, so as I'm in this house, I've got someone trying to find the girl's stepdad. Because the girl's family are lying to everyone on this show. So this girl's family have done this big campaign. It's called Justice for Ellie. And they're pumping all these stories out. And, the, and so are lots of people on our side of politics. Yeah? People mm. who are trusted as well. Maggie Oliver was one of them. Yeah? Maggie Oliver, they're all pumping. Maggie Oliver's the person who, who helped unveil grooming scandal as an ex-police officer so they're all pumping this story and i know the dad knows of five other occasions that this girl's lied on right. serious issues yeah. so i'm trying to find the dad so i've got someone and, and i'm in this muslim's house and we're sitting down his, his wife's there his kids are there and um and then my phone rings and says i'm not he's, he's in the uh, kfc car park yeah i've got someone following him so i said right i'm on my way so i rush up shooting over i get out of the car and I go up to him, I say, when you go, and I've got all this footage. I said, when are you going to tell the British public the truth? Yeah. When are you going to stop lying to them? Because I know you're lying. Yeah? Mm. And he's like, what? Well, he's expecting me to be up there just, but I've already done a week of research and, 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 and interviews lots of people up so there. He's ahead of it anyway. So I said, when are you going to tell the truth? And then as I do that, someone, like, some boy's on his bike, he goes, you racist prick. Just the usual fucking soy boy, long hair mess. So I said, mate, fuck off, yeah? And then he spits in my face. So as he spits in my face, I hit him a couple of times. Put him on, put him on. He falls off his bike. As he falls off his bike, I've then got back in the car. We've left. I've gone back to the Muslim fella's house. I'm like, bruv, man. I said, you ain't gonna leave what just happened. I said what? And then you see blue sirens all outside. Oh man. I said, I just punched some bloke up in the car park. He spat in my face. Call me racist. And I, but my mate's video and all this. So the cameraman says, police all outside. My mate rings me. I'm laughing my head off because my mate rings me up. He goes, bruv, police around the car. So I look out the window and police are all around his car. Yeah, and I'm thinking, so then I'm laughing. And then I said, my mate says, what should I do with the footage? He goes, shall I delete the footage? I said, no, don't delete the footage. I said, give me that. And we take the, take the chip out. I put the chip somewhere where the police ain't going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, but, but it, and I had it and my, the Muslim fellas like Tommy told me to take you out the back door and get you out of here and I'm like I said no nah, it's alright because they're just gonna, they'll just come to my house yeah. and my mate rings he goes they're nicking me they're nicking me and I'm laughing yeah? and then, and then um, I look at the cameraman the cameraman's literally white yeah? pale white mm. and I look at the Muslim fella and, I said, and the Muslim goes the Muslim, Muhammad goes have you ever been arrested before the cameraman's like this is my cameraman's second day yeah? he's like no. <laughs> I said, you're about to get arrested, bruv. You're welcome to the... Is well, he surprised? He's a part of your team. This was his second... But we, and he would come for... Journey, and, and we start laughing and I say, welcome to the team. So yeah. I get to the police station. I'm arrested. When they nick me, I get nicked on GBH section 18. I ring home. And I, I ring, I'm in there hours, yeah? I remember, I've got, I've got all the footage, right? They think they've got the footage, but I've got the footage. So I'm laying there quite happy in my cell. I'm worrying, thinking I can't move because they're going to come in at any time, realising they haven't even got the, they haven't got the cards, the memory stick cards. My mate then goes, my, I ring home, speak to my wife, and she says, you're getting remanded. I said, what do you mean I'm getting remanded? I give him a slap. I give him a slap because he spat in my face. I can't be getting remanded. She goes, he's got a broken leg. I was like, what? She goes, yeah, you're getting done GB8 section 18. And then, they, and then I was like, oh, no, man. No, no. And then when I got to interview, they interviewed me, and he says I called him a non-binary fag. Yeah? So I'm nicked on a hate crime. So I think I'm now on a hate crime and a GB8 section 18. But I'm still thinking, it's all right. I've got the footage yeah, mm. that proves I didn't say any of this. It shows him spitting my face. It shows me giving him a couple of clouts, which is self-defense. So I'm thinking all this. So anyway, I get out of the police station. I get released. 
I don't get reminded. When, when they interview me, I, I, I said, listen, I said, if you remind me, I said, the footage, which you don't have, because it's up there. And they said, where's the footage? I said, it's up there. <laughs> I, didn't call him, I didn't call him anything, yeah? And he spat in my face. So if you're born and put me in jail, you're just going to look like absolute clowns. I said, because whilst I'm in jail, the footage is going to get released, which shows that I was the victim, yeah? Mm. And this clown's lied to you, right? So they give me bail. And then when I get, when I get home, I get the stick, I ring my mate, I get the stick, and um, I put the stick in, and it's blank. And then I'm literally, and my, my wife knew, because she was just, I, I literally, I got a most, because I thought, I'm fucked. I'm on a GBX machine, yeah, of a hate crime against some little mess of uh, some non-binary kid for calling, and, and he says I called him a non-binary fag. So I shit myself, yeah. I come out of the room. At this time, Black Lives Matter demonstrations are going on in London. Mm. Yeah? All the, um, the Commonwealth statue was defaced. I don't know if you know that, yeah? yeah? yeah, yeah. They defaced and the Winston Churchill. I come out ready to explode. And I literally made a video. And bear in mind, I'm talking to VK. VK was a Russian social media. Yeah? So I think I'm having a fucking rant. Yeah? You fucking do that. And I've gone on this mad rant about Black Lives Matter as an organisation. Yeah? Not against blacks or anything like that. So anyone can watch. I, I had this with my school friends. I said, no, no, no. Tell me what I said that was wrong in what I said. Yeah, yeah it was the way I, I delivered it. I went mad. But that, at that time is when I went mad. I was, and I went mad at that moment. So I was sitting in my house, went ranting in, the, ranting in the lounge about Black Lives Matter, called a demonstration in London off the back of that, actually took the, took the memories card to a forensic specialist company to retrieve the deleted footage. Mm. I've got the deleted footage. So then I just played 10 seconds of it, which showed I didn't call him a non-binary fag, yeah? And he spat at me. So then the case was, that case was kicked out. But I, at that moment in time, I thought, I'm fucked. You're fucked yeah. I'm fucked, yeah. I, I'm just going to go out as a hate crime. It's going to go out as all this. I'm going to get six years probably for GBX Section 18. Um, but that's what happened. So then I went on the rant about Black Lives Matter. Now, I don't know what you knew about Black Lives Matter at the time of this. Um, I was not marching. I'll tell you that for You wasn't free. marching. Um, and also, I know, yeah, it's not like... The whole name was just not what it was. It's a that. fucking genius name. Yeah. They stole, that, yeah, they, they yeah. used the no, name. We got pimped out. Like, I'll be honest. You got, got pimped, pimped out, out massively, yeah, man. I mean, I wasn't marching, so I never got pimped. But no. those people that took it very literally and ran with it, and it was a very And we're getting put in jail. Led, loads of them in jail. Mad. Loads of lads are in jail mm. that were wound up. So basically, these Marxists, these communists who want a revolution, they can't get the people on the streets to cause it. So what do they do? They take the black community's grievances, they whip it up, whip it up, whip it up, whip it up, yeah. and then they send them out. 30, 30, 30 people killed in America, mm. including many black people, shop owners, ex, ex-police officers. None of the money that was raised went to black people. None of it went to black away. people. No, it went to white politicians for the fucking Democrat Party, bruv. But my thing, so Black Lives Matter, that, so I went there, that rant about Black Lives Matter, and just for anyone else who didn't know this, Black Lives Matter website, yeah? Black Lives Matter was created by two lesbian Marxists. What's the relevance in that? On Black Lives Matter website, it said, and I knew this at the time when I went on the rant, I knew it had been formed, te- I'd watched the organisation for 10 years. Most people thought it formed when George Floyd was killed, yeah? I'd watched it for 10 years. What they have on their website is that they want to destroy the nuclear family. Break up the nuclear family. Get rid of mums and dads. Yeah? Why would they want to do that? What does getting rid of a dad do? It brings poverty, criminality and reliant on the state. It makes sure your, your mother is reliant on the state. They don't want you having a dad. They don't want you having a family. Yeah? The other thing that Black Lives Matter, not me saying it, it was on their website, is to promote an LGD, LGBTQ plus agenda. Yeah? Well, how does that help black lives? So at this time, I went on my rant about Black Lives Matter and it caused me murders, man. Mm. That caused me so murders. what did you say? Anyone else fucking raging watching the scenes in London. I heard there was about 10 lads guarding that Churchill memorial, that Churchill statue, only for the police to come and remove them, to move them out of the way so that scumbags could deface it. But what is going on? What is going on when the police, who are meant to be there to maintain, maintain the law, they're meant to be there to protect statues to prevent people de- desecrating them, and defacing them. But instead they move the people where? Who are there to protect them? I just see, I don't know how many more of you have seen. I've seen someone's put up for a unity demonstration in London next Saturday. Do you know what? If you're a lad, or you call yourself a lad, and you're a football lad, and you go to football, and you... You give a shit at all about our country, our history, our culture, our identity. 
I expect you're going to be in London next Saturday. Because you know what? And this is such a shame on the police because people, the British public shouldn't feel the need to travel into the capital city. We should know that you're going to police them arseholes, those total scumbags. Your job is to police those streets. Unfortunately, you've let them do what they're doing. Whilst the media report it as they're peaceful protesters, whilst 27 police officers are put in hospital. And you've let them go and deface and spray paint Churchill's statue, you arseholes. How you can't expect people... To, the British public won't sit by and watch that shit. So what you're going to end up with next Saturday is every lad in London, or every lad who's any sort, if you call yourself a man, will be in London protecting those war memorials. Unity, I've seen, I've seen the late... I'm not organising it. I've, seen, I've just seen it, I've seen it getting floated about. I'll be there reporting on it for people. But how the hell the police can allow that to happen? How can they think that's acceptable? You see, they've just pulled down some statue from 1700. 300 years old. Who gives a shit what it's about or what the man done? It's part of British history. What are you going to start with next? Churchill said this, that's what... Next, if this isn't stopped next Saturday, they'll be ripping Churchill's statue down. Then it'll be William Gladstone's statue. Because he said Islam in a man... He, he held a Quran above his head and he made bigoted comments about Islam. Then they'll pull his statue down. You know what, you scumbag protesters? You want to pull a statue down? Start with the BBC. It's a paedophile who created a sculpture of a naked boy being held by a man. How come you don't rip that down? Because most of you fucking sympathise with it. So how anyone is so... I'll just sit there watching it just thinking, what is going on? What's happening? This protest today, you know, Andy Joshua, have you got anything to say about this shit? Hey? You got anything to say about what they've done to Churchill's statue? Or you think he's a racist as well, do you? Hey? What about Little Mix? You were there, weren't you? Hey? Well, you support the defacing of our Churchill statue, do you? Every one of you fucking celebrities, all jumping on your little virtue signaling bandwagon. Bullshit. Every one of you just wanting to show yourselves with a little BLM sign. While you're defacing, every one of you has organised that. Everyone who's encouraged that supports that shit. Why ain't you down there cleaning it up? Oh, I bet we don't see none of you celebrities down there getting that shit off of those statues. That man died fighting the biggest races in our history. That man, died, that man led our country through that fucking war. How many people sacrificed their lives in that war? And you just turn up and think you can deface it. You spoiled virtue signalling little shits. Oh man, so how many people are going to London next Saturday? Every single man should be in London next Saturday. Or forever, don't call yourself a patriot. Don't call yourself a patriot. There's no good sitting behind your keyboard with all these scumbags, masked up scumbags, think they're going to go rip Churchill's statue down because they're not. And Metropolitan Police, you're fucked up big time with this one because next Saturday, watch what you're going to have in London. You're going to have fucking thousands of men who ain't going to let them march through that city and smash the shit out of everything. And it's your fault. No one else's. You've done it. You've created it through your weak, bullshit, political policing. Where you stand there, you let your police officers get smashed off horses. You let your police officers get terrorised in our capital city. You embarrass, you embarrass your police force in front of the whole world to watch. Because you're too soft-handed. Because they're not fucking white, basically. You then enforce the law because there's too many people who aren't white. And you don't know what to do, do you? You don't even draw your bands. You don't put your riot gear on. You let your officers get clapped from the side. You're watching police officers get sideswiped and punched and kicked all over the floor. And you don't enforce the law. Why not? What's your problem? Oh, man, I'm, I'm just watching it and I'm getting so fucking angry. Just thinking, how the fuck can you let that happen in our capital city? How can you move? It's not that you let it happen. You purposely let it happen. You moved the men out of the way that were there to protect that statue. And you made sure that those people could come and vandalise it. Piers Morgan, any celebrity who has supported this bullshit, those 27 injured police officers, it's on your hands. Okay? I think 70% of people killed in police custody in the United States are white. You talk about white privilege. 600,000 crimes were committed in the United States last year by black people against white people. 
60,000 crimes were committed by white people against black people. Don't bring this bullshit, bullshit politics to our country because we haven't got it. That racial tensions that they might have in the United States, we don't have based on race. Race politics, which BLM, you've done more to break down race fucking integration in this country than anyone's tried to do. Much more than the National Front ever done. Look what you've done. Look what you're doing. The divide that you're about to create in this country is fucking going to be un unrecognisable. And you've done it. They've been allowed to do it. It's funded by all these far left organisations. Antifa. And they're supported by politicians. The Labour Party supported that today. The Labour Party. How fucking weak. Anyway, next Saturday, I'll see you all in London. Because my blood pressure is about to go. I can't believe what's come of our country. And that statue like you did in Bristol today, and there's not going to be a British public there to confront you about it. You're wrong. You watch next Saturday how many people turn up. I basically went on a rant. The one walls have been attacked, and I said, next Saturday... We're going down. We're going down. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that bit. That's how I said it, yeah? Next mm. Saturday... Who was we? We. Yeah, that's what... That's Who what, was we? Just, uh, I, I called out to lads, basically. Okay. They called out to white lads. <laughs> yeah. uh, but then I saw Sarah Garvey said, when I said, our history. I thought, what are you talking about, bro? What do you mean? Like, he said that, because I said um, something about our history. He said, well, what he means by our here is white. And I said, like, what? How did you get that? I just said, so then I called on people to come down to defend the statues, yeah? Now, what people wouldn't recall at the time as well, may not, the statues were being defaced, yeah? Commonwealth statues. Statues which are very dear to, to, dear to our country in the remembrance of people who sacrificed their lives for all of our freedoms, and they're being attacked and plans to deface them and bring them down. And... I made the call, and it was after, after I made the call on this little Russian social media. Bing, 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 bing. My phone went mad. My son come down. Mm. My son's like, Dad. I said, what? He said, OFB want to kill you, bruv. OFB? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They put some hit Original on me. Farm boy. He said, oh, OFB. I said, I said, son, who are OFB? My son's like 10. How old was your son at the time? 10. Okay. 10, 11. And yeah. he goes, man. And he started showing me all these little videos, and I started watching, and it blew up. But what you didn't get is my rant about Black Lives Matter, which might have been three, four, five minutes long, you got a 30-second clip, yeah, mm. which made it look like I was calling on Black Lives Matter against Black Lives Matter. We're here to have it with Black Lives Matter. And then I sat there afterwards thinking, damn, someone's going to die here, man, mm. in the capital city in London, and it's on my head. That was a mad time. I remember even seeing the video and loads of people going with intentions, like, it's going to be a mad brawl, like, yeah, yeah, going yeah. for each other. Yeah, going for each other, yeah. Uh, which would that then develop still. into a race race war of whites yeah, yeah, yeah. and blacks, which is yeah. not what I want. I didn't like that at all. No, I made honest. a video saying I'm not going, yeah? I made a video saying I'm not going. Um, this wasn't, the, my rant wasn't about that. It, and do you know what? It wasn't just, because I still stand by, I went in my, my school fr my school group, from kids from school. For, uh, a few of those black lads have never spoke to me again. Okay. So I'm so. like, bruv, like what? I've been mates 20 years. Mm. Like, we, what's going on? Yeah. Because I went on a rant about, because a, a, a criminal in the United States had been killed. Like, it's the timing of it all, of everything. But then they said, no, you don't get it. And I said, like, well, explain it to me then. Explain it to me, mm. yeah? And then, and then I showed them the, sh the facts about Black Lives Matter. And this is where I... The facts about Black Lives Matter as an organisation, the racism out of the organisation in the United States, the division it's caused, all these different things in the United States, yeah, as that organisation. I said, brother, you may agree with certain parts of it, but that's like saying, well, I like what uh, Ku Klux Klan say about this, so I'm going to go stand with them. It's like, no, brother, that organisation... Mm is a terrorist organisation, yeah? They've yeah. killed 30 people, many of them are black. And if you actually trace the money, you'll realise that you're just being played, totally played and used mm. and whipped up. But yeah, that's... So I went on this rant about Black Lives Matter. So me. would you say, like, from looking back at that rant, obviously it was emotionally led because you already had those issues It was totally before. emotionally led. It caused me murders, man. That was mm. the most difficult... That was the, what, the most difficult period. Bearing in mind, I've took on Islam... Yeah, and I, I've took on Islam as now a little got, five, for six, a new... five for six white lad from Luton. I've called it on with the whole of the Islamic world. I've had five, six Muslims uh, sentenced to 30 years in jail for planning to kill me. But the worst moment and the most stressful time was over that Black Lives Matter stuff. Mm. And I think it's because I weren't happy. I'm happy to wear the hat against Islam and, and I don't mind it. It's like, no, I believe that. But mm. then when I thought, oh, now I've now got lots of young black lads who, are gonna, who think that I'm against them when I'm not. Totally not. In fact, I'm against the, the bastards that are totally playing you. 
And when you talk about slavery, I said the Democrat Party still still want you on plantations, lads. Yeah? They they don't want your dad's there. They don't want you succeeding. They want to break your family, Planned Parenthood. The, the destruction of the family is the biggest cause of this organisation. Even now, what we're seeing now, they want to break the family of all of us. Yeah, that's their target is the family. So, so that everyone can become weak, reliant on the state. They don't want you succeeding. Mm. That's the real racism. Yeah, well, that was the BLM time. Yeah, that was a mad time. That was what during COVID. Yeah, it was a start, wasn't it, man? Yeah, that was, oh, during, it was, that was 2020. Yeah, it was stress. Did you ever like actually like apologize for that video? At all? I what? made a video afterwards saying, um, yeah, yeah, I did, I did, and I don't apologize for anything. I apologized on the sense that for how it was received. Yeah, because what I said to even my mate school group, I said, look, tell me what I said that was wrong. Even in the rant, tell me what I said that was wrong. Yeah. I'm ranting about an organisation which is taking the piss. This I've watched this organisation absolutely take liberties in the United States, cause destruction, murder, chaos, burn down. It's all the it's all the all, all the Hispanic and black people's shops are getting burned and looted. Yeah, mm-hmm. I said, and and they they're not to be set up again. So the corporations then come in and take over all the shops. I said, so I've watched what they're doing, and now it's here on my shores. And I'm thinking, why is it on my shores? Even we're in London, yeah, black on black crime. Mm. The amount of young kids getting murdered. I think what it's took for everyone to come out on the streets for our capital city. I would love for that to happen. Is this in the United States? Yeah, I would I said, love get for out, it, yeah. get, There's a lot to get out on the streets for in this country. 100%. There's a, and the role models, and what I couldn't understand was, I'm thinking, no, the role models who should be listened to, I think Sarah Garvey's good. Yeah? Mm. I think he's good. I know he's a black, he's a black nationalist and we, we might d- disagree on many things. But when I heard of OFB, I spoke about this the other day, I didn't know who they were. So, so when I was going to Brixton, when I was invited to Brixton afterwards, I went and I was thinking, about 60 people were there, weren't they? I was thinking, right, I'm walking into Brixton and everyone wants to kill me and I'm going to talk about Black Lives Matter. And I'm still going to tell the truth mm. on, what, on what this group is and what they're doing, yeah? But I think when people hear my defence to it or my side of it, then they'll realise I won't just scream in some racist nonsense, yeah? Mm. Which, they've, which they've been led to believe. So I went into Brixton and, um, and I spoke about Black Lives Matter and I said, I- I've never heard of OFB. So I looked up who OFB are and they want to kill me because I spoke out against Black Lives Matter. Well, they've murdered five black men. Yeah? So how, don't fucking tell me you give a shit about black lives, lads. Yeah? Right? Because you are in war with black people. Yeah? You are killing, whether it was over them, I'm not saying over them being black, but you're having a go at me. And when I looked at the history then of Black Lives Matter, I looked at one of the boys and this where it got, where, this when it come to me. One of the boys got, I think it, a boy robbed his chain, yeah? He had a chain that was given to him, him by his father the only time he's ever met his father. Yeah? So he gave him a chain. So because of that, and it was robbed by these other boys. So when he saw one of these other boys, because it's held such a sentimental value, that chain, because his dad had given it that he doesn't see, yeah? he stabbed him to death. So, so, Wait, so his dad's cha- dad, his dad gave him a chain? His dad gave him a chain. He got a robbed? It got robbed, yeah. Okay. The boy that robbed it, he saw, and he killed him. Okay. And what I said is, the reason there is so much gang violence, the reason there is poverty, the reason people are stuck in this cycle of violence, yeah, is because the da- it's fatherless homes. Mm. Yeah? Now, the majority of fatherless homes happen to be in the black community. I'm not saying... Yeah, no, 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 you're right. You're right, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's coming from black man, it's true. Yeah, a lot saying... of people don't know their dads. I mean, I know my dad, but like a lot of people don't know their dads. And a lot least... of people never grew up with their dads. Who do they look up to it's then? It's still. And who do they look up to then? The people in the area. The people in the area, yeah? And, o- and OFB. So still. I went through OFB song, yeah? Five million views at this time, yeah? It's probably 20 million now, yeah? I went I through their song. I listen to their music. I like their music. Yeah, I know, but... I'm fucked, though. I I probably should have been listening to it and streaming it. ain't helping it. But, but you see the I words, what are the lyrics? Either. Stab them, juck them, shoot. Every yeah. lyric was glorifying violence. Every lyric, yeah? So I think, lads, like, you're all going mad, you're all out in the capital city, you're all ready to riot, you're all burning shit down, you're all, ga- you're, all, you're all blaming everything else, yeah? But there's a few in-the-house problems here that should be tackled and need to be addressed, and I don't think the drill music's helping. And that's Definitely not to say, because my son li- listened to it, my son loves it. Mm. Did you um, take him to a drill concert? We wanted to go to an OFB concert, Heady One's performing. Heady One, because Heady One come up, he, he piped up. He piped up putting a picture of me up saying wanted or saying. I think, mm. and then I, I didn't even know who Heady One was, so I started searching Heady One and I see him getting bullied in Luton. Damn, I don't but, know about that. No, the only time he's been to Luton, I think. Yeah, he was I getting bullied in some hotel by some lads. But I, I didn't know who none of these people were, yeah? Mm. I don't have a problem with the black community, yeah? At all. Evidently, yeah. Evidently. What saying, yeah. But when I do, I, I saw a lot of hypocrisy at this time. I thought, no, no, come out all you want and criticise me. Come out all you want and criticise racism. Come out and address all these issues. But talk about the other issues as well. Because there's some serious issues that are leading to a lot of these problems. Yep. So, yeah. Definitely, without a doubt. Um, it's actually funny. Someone asked me to ask a question about um, Nico. NDL. I like him. Bro. I find that so funny because I actually know Nico. Shout Do out to you? Nico. Yeah, yeah, I know him personally. I've known him yeah. for years, like probably like 10 years. Do you know, he, he, mate, he's successful. He's good at what he does. Yeah. Mm. He's a funny character. He done a trolling thing against the English Defence League. Yeah. 
He done two, yeah, genius man. But he done one when he I... had them. Man. Oh, he had them. No, but he had it wasn't me. you. In one of the he videos. had me, man. Yeah, yeah, he had yeah. you. He, he made had you say it, right? He had me wheel him in. Yeah, he put an old age, old man's mask on as a white oh man. Oh my yeah? gosh! And he did just have me wheel him in, but he had me promote his merch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had me He's say NDL, NDL. And I was just thinking, and he said it was Norwegian Defence League. And, and like, you believed it? Oh, mate, oh, yeah. On a demo day, I'm like, I've got so much going on. You just say whatever. It was a massive rally. I had some old some old man, actually, a young black lad. I had some old man sat there saying, oh, yeah, can you just say this? I just said it. But a lot of people were angry, like, in, even in our... In so, the, I said, oh, okay. what are you angry about, man? It's just a kid having fun, man. He's, he's a comedian, fun, and he's fucking done yeah, well. you can't take Nico seriously. He's literally having... Did you watch his um, KKK video? I know, yeah, I did, yeah, I did, yeah, yeah, I did. Nah, he's a joker. He's just having fun. But he's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's it's good good entertainment, and he isn't actually harming anyone. No, he's good. He's having fun. He's good, and he mocked us, and it was very successful, and it was very funny. So, and my son loves him again. And actually, I've had so Nico. You know, if you're watching this, I've had my my son's had photos taken of him a few times. Oh, really? Okay. (laughs) Does has he told Nico like? No, I've been with him. I've been there with him. Oh, you was with him at the time. I've been there with him. Fair enough. Um, you see, in terms of Twitter, because you said you've been banned off like everything, right? Yeah. So, like, in- did you have Instagram before? I had Instagram. So, on Twitter, I had, so two, five years ago, I had uh, 475,000 followers. I got up to 172 million people were reading my tweets in four week period. So, I was big on Twitter. I was big on Facebook. I had 1.2 million, uh, 30,000 people would sign in live, which is what they hated, because then you've got influence. It's like Andrew Tate, that's why they hate him. Mm. You, you reach, I'm reaching past people. You see all these allegations of racism. I'm reaching straight past the media, straight past the headline, and getting into people's phones and talking to them straight, saying, actually, that's bullshit. And when people are listening, they're thinking, oh, he's all right. Yeah, he's, mm. oh, he's not extreme. And certain point, and they're agreeing with things, which is what they hated. Because he's um, from Luton as well, right? Tate, yeah. Yeah. Um, who else is from Luton? Is there any other people that like, we would know? Stacey Dooley. Who's that? I don't even know. She uh, won Dancing on Ice. Okay. Yeah. Um, who else? Did you know these people like the um, Stacey and Andrew and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because he's 39, so he's around your age. Yeah, he's, um, no, he's younger than 39, isn't he? He's 39. I watched the video. Um, yeah, my friend that did the interview, he said, well, 36, maybe? Yeah, 36. 36, 36 35, I'd have thought mid 30s. He's 36 then, sorry, my bad. Tommy Robinson, you may well have heard of him. Political. I know him. He's a Luton yeah. guy. I know him very well. And that's I why I brought it up, because, you, you know, you lived in Luton. I mean, did you ever have, bump into Tommy? Ever have any experiences with Tommy, or is it just you, a name? You can you message know, Tommy right now and say you're talking to Tate, and he'll love it. be like, oh, Tate, that, yeah, we're best. I've hung out with Tommy untold times. And, you know, without getting too deep into the politics of it, because... You know, I, I'm not saying I disagree with him or agree with him, but I'll tell you something. He's a solid guy. He means what he says. He's got a good heart. He's honest. And I think that what the establishment is trying to do to him is is, is extremely unfair. But, um, yeah, he so he has always done what he's doing now. Yeah? I remember, I'm going back, say, 15 years. Yeah? Mm. 15 years, he put up a Facebook post on Mother's Day saying, before anyone would have known who he is, yeah? he's just a boy in Luton. And he said, uh, if you, and he named everything you would have done, if you bought your mum a Mother's Day card and you bought her flowers and you dropped them around, he listed all these things. If you'd done that today on Mother's Day, told her you love her, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> he, go, he said, do you know what I've done? I said, mum, how much uh, do you earn this year? £25,000. There's 10 years wages, you don't have to work again. That's what a real son does. A son that loves his mum, a son who cares. And he wrote all this stuff. And I used to watch him and I see everyone going mad, like pr- literally going mad at him. Like, he knows what he's doing. No. Mate, he knows what he's yeah, doing. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, That's what good. I realized. I, he's, just, he's a very clever yeah, man. He's, he's very smart. Like, you look at his interviews and you look at what he tweets and says or posts or whatever, and it's two different things. If you sit down with him and you actually speak and hear him, a lot of the things that he tweets and says is just to get a reaction. To get a reaction. Uh, though he, he believes it, it's just more of an extreme way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. He's, he, I believe he's very he believes cool. what he's And he I says. had a little with a lot of my followers, even a lot of people listening now. Mm. I said, no, he's cool. I know he's cool. I yeah. don't think he's cool. I know he's he's converted to Islam now. Don't agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah how do you feel about it? Someone <laughs> actually asked me. Someone <laughs> asked me what would it take for you to convert to Islam? Nothing. I'm actually being serious. Like that I would was... never convert to Islam. You could take this off before I converted to Islam. Mm. I'd stand on that, mate. But do you know what's happening currently? Islam's becoming an attraction to so many people. So many people who are men who are fed up who are looking at what the West is becoming. Yes. And this is a dangerous time because they shouldn't be converting to Islam over this year. But they're looking for something that's strong in principle and stands on stands its ground. Yeah. That's not going to be letting them teach their their little their little boy that he can become a girl at the age of six or giving them all these drug hormones, all these things. What's doing that at the minute? Islam, what's very stand on? So there are some good th- good mm. points of Islam, yeah, that would, would uh, a lot of people may start becoming mm. attracted to. When I listened to Tate's speech for a wh- speak for a while, I could see it. 
Yeah. I can see it coming. Can I be honest to you? Like me, I've got a lot of Muslim friends. I'm not yeah. Muslim personally. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I say atheist or whatever. I don't really follow a religion per se. I believe in like a stronger power. I don't yeah. really follow a religion. But um, yeah, with like a lot of my friends personally, none of them are radical. Like they're yeah. pretty cool people. They're and, probably and not, generally, they probably don't listen to the Quran and practice every word in it. Which most Muslims are cultural Muslims. Most mm. of them. They don't, most Christians don't, they don't follow that book to every single word. The problem, I, I think we have a problem mm. when we have literalist Muslims who take the Quran literally to the word it is in 2022. Yeah? That's when we have a problem. That's when we see jihad. That's when we see war. That's when we see terrorism. Mm. That's when we see all these problems. And, but most, most Muslims, most Muslims just want to live their life. Most, if I go down to the local yeah, majority gamble, of them will call. Yeah. That's if I go down cool. to the local bookie shop here yeah. and I walk in, I bet after lads in there Muslim. Yeah. Well, the Quran, no, says, they're gonna, the Quran not, says they're going to yeah. burn in hellfire and their skin will grow back and then it'll burn off again and all this mad stuff. So they don't, they're not following it to the word. And I, and I don't have a problem with them. Not oh, following. I just realised because in the book you're not meant to gamble and stuff. Yeah, you're not meant to gamble. Yeah, but you're, not meant, you're gamble. not meant to do most stuff, are you? Yeah, no. Neither are Christians. Yeah? No, we do it. What, we all do it, yeah? Yeah. But what I'm saying is my problem is with the literal right. interpretation yeah. and the teachings of Islam to the 7th century barbaric form, which is the word of it. Because one thing I would say, even with what you were saying, like in the Western world, it's a mess. Let's be honest. Like the Western world we're is a mess, finished. Man. So even in that case, I ain't going to lie. Like I wouldn't, they would call it revert, right? I think for them it's revert. Yeah, um, but they're just <clears> taking the piss again. Whatever, revert, convert, whatever it is. Like your revert sign, was it wasn't it? Yeah, go on. That is like, honestly, I can see why people are doing it. Well, I ain't going to lie. I, I can actually see why people are no, so converting. I can. I can, especially at the minute. I actually can, because they will stand on certain things. I used to say to my missus. Yeah, they'll stand I on said, certain things. I said, don't moan at me. See if they win, I'll just marry three of your mates. I'm fucking <laughs> Life's good for me. As yeah, no, I, I'm not going to lie. For that, I, I think they're one of the people that have actually held their beliefs to an extent where yeah, it's Yeah, like, and the church is now putting up rainbow flags and stuff like that. It's comical. But the, but most people who have infiltrated the church in England, yeah, I don't even believe in Jesus Christ. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. They've infiltrated it to push their Marxist ideology within the religious institutions. Like, they've infiltrated the education system, everything, mm. to weaken everything. And I, actually, I'll, t- I'll tell you a story. So, did you see the Muslims protesting in Birmingham outside the schools? No. No. So, basically, they're teaching in the schools that um, boys can be girls and girls can be boys and all this mad stuff here. Yeah. And the Muslim parents have, uh, one of the kids has come home and said to his dad, I can be a girl. And he's like, no, you can't. Yeah. And, and then he's, he's, look, he's gone up the school and he started protesting. So I looked at the person in charge of this ideology within the teaching education system within Birmingham. And I went back through their previous comments and their previous comments five years prior was we must smash heteronormativity. Yeah. That's my, that's men. So this was what five years Th- before. This, this so this this all blew up, th- say three years ago. Yeah? Okay. And five years prior to her, Ellie, what's her name? Ellie Downs, Ellie Brown, uh, the the woman who so she's she's in charge of the teaching system within Birmingham, and she's the one pushing the LGBTQ plus, which is an agenda and a nar- into the into the children. Yeah, and they're saying it's about di- it's about inclusion and diversity and all this. No, it's not. Yeah, your words, right? We want to smash heteronormativity. That's men with women. You want to smash men being with women. Yeah? You want to confuse a whole generation of kids. So when I saw the Muslim men protesting this, I actually searched out one of their houses and I went up to his house in Birmingham, real, real dense Muslim uh, populated area. And I took this old Christian boy who's about 70. I thought, that I don't want him to know I'm just coming in peace. I knocked on his door. He's opened the door and he's like, Tommy, <laughs> Tommy Robinson, yeah? what, the, what the fuck are you doing here? I said, bro, I agree with everything you're saying. I'm watching what's going on. Because they ra- the, the papers labelled these parents as extremists, Muslim extremists, yeah? They were, ra- they were put down as radicals. All bullshit. All bullshit, yeah? They're concerned. So I said, I'm here, I'm here as a concerned dad. And you're a concerned dad. And what they're doing to our kids here is, is wrong. So he said, come in for dinner. And I went in for dinner. It's, it's a mad one because he, he's obviously got... He's a very strict religious beliefs... And I've got his wife handing us dinner around the corner because I couldn't see her. <laughs> so we were sitting there. And she's, so we have dinner in his house. And I said, mate, I just want to offer my support yeah, in any way I can to separate you lot from being called Muslim extremists in this issue mm. because you're actually fighting for all of our kids. And it's only Muslims that are going to stand up like this. Yeah? But what they've done is they used the legal system, which we'll get onto. They, they used the legal system against those parents because they give them injunctions, prevent them from protesting outside school gates or they go straight to jail. Like they've done to me with many of these court injunctions. Mm. So when they, yeah, they use the media to beat them all down as radicals, yeah, and then they give them all these court injunctions. So uh, and I walked out. I got chased out. I walked out of his house. Yeah, so we had dinner, 
And then I said, mate, I just want to, if we, I want it to work together. I said, don't you shut a school down. Let us all shut a school down. Yeah. Because we need to start shutting schools down. Mm. That's, that's what we need to be doing. They're teaching our kids that they are sexualizing children. Do you know part of national curriculum in, in, in Wales? They want to teach children aged six years old. This may sound mad. Yeah. How to self love themselves. Masturbate. This is, that's a, a, a man, an adult, male, woman wants to have a, ch- a, a conversation with a six-year-old kid over this. And now there's some women been fighting in Wales for parents' rights because they want to stop your ability to pull your child out of sex education and these different things they want to teach them. But this is all their agenda, which is all part of the same agenda to weaken the family, to sexualise the kids. And I agree with the Muslims. And, I, and, and, and as you said, it's the Muslims that will stand up on this. And it was mm. the Muslims who stood up in Birmingham. stand up people. They, with what they believe in, they, they will down. stand they on backing it, down. to be fair. So yeah, they, and I respect I, that. I respect, I respect that. that side of it, and yeah. and they um, mm. and that's what happened in Birmingham. But then mm. they managed to marginalise them, and they managed to put them down as extremists. And all the papers beat them down as extremists. The media told. Mm. So, so from your standpoint, they weren't extremists. They're not extremists at all. And they were Muslim. Yeah, they're not extremists. So you believe that there can be Muslims that aren't extremists? Of course I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Obviously, you know what I'm doing, though, right? Yeah, no, I'm you're not, doing you I'm just clarifying no, no, totally, to of course, understand yeah. this because some people no, of course, totally. believe that you think every single Muslim. I, I is separate. An I separate Muslims from Islam. Some people say, "How do you, how how can you do that?" I say, "Muslims are people. You love great. You love good. You love bad. You love lovely. You love all those things in those people. Mm. They're people. Yeah. If I hated people, there's a problem. I have a problem with the doctrines of Islam." the book and the prophet Muhammad and if I talk about his actions in his life and I want to criticise it that's my right to do so yeah? and I should be free to do that and, and I think we, everyone should be awake to who Muhammad was I think many Muslims are naive to the agenda of Islam if, if Islam got full control under Islamic law like you see the Muslim women now fighting for their rights in Iran dying being beaten down being battered being murdered yeah, by oppressors Islamic oppressors who are enforcing Islam on them yeah? and they're fighting for freedom from it Many of Muslims in the West here, just because they're part of it, and I get it, you're brought up, it's part of your cultural identity, so when someone wants to talk about it like me, you get a bit upset. But I realise they don't get that upset, really, because when I spoke about Black Lives Matter, a lot more people got upset. Mm. <laughs> so to clarify a few things, so w- these are just questions that people have asked, yep. I may know the answer, whatever. So would you, people say you're racist, are you racist? Zero racism in my body, mate. Um, people say you're Islamophobic. Would you say that you're Islamophobic? There's no such word. A phobia is an irrational fear. It's mm. not irrational to fear genocide, to fear jihad, to, to fear... There's 20,000 Muslims on the British terror watch list. Yeah? 20,000, right? It costs £9 billion a year to monitor them, 25 days, 7 days a week. Yeah? That's, it's, it's not irrational to fear that. When we've had teachers beheaded in, in France, when we've had refugees who have come in and caused murder and war, when you've seen the attacks on... When you've seen t- 26 dead or whatever it was in the Manchester... In, in the Manchester attacks, when you've seen soldiers beheaded, that's not irrational to fear these things, man, with the growing demographical change to this country. If you look at the demographical change, yeah, the black community aren't increasing. I'll, I'll tell you for Luton. In Luton, black and white community are increasing by 1% to 1.3% yeah, over the next 20 years. The Islamic community, which is the Bangladeshi and Pakistani, 70 to 77%. That's the increase. Yeah? With that growth forecast, which is going to happen so quick, so fast, as well as all the open borders and the shipping in of more migrants mm. at the same time, it's going to cause a problem. And, and, and with that, with Islam, comes a lot of problems from Islam. And if you can't talk about them, whether it be grooming, whether it be female genital mutilation, all these things you can't talk about because people say, oh, you're Islamophobic. What's the word for it then? What word would you say? Like, if you have to, because obviously you it, don't, say, there is I'd something, say, you have I'd something say, against I'd the religion, that so what would it be? Anti-Muslim hate is not right, yeah? So people promoting hate against Muslims because they're Muslim is not, ha- is not right. Criticism of Islam is 100% justified and 100% needed. Yeah? People need to understand, we need to understand, as British people, what will more Islam bring to this country? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Who was the pro- Prophet Muhammad? Was he a nice guy or was he a bad guy? He beheaded 600 people in one day. He had sex with a, with a nine-year-old. Yeah? Don't sound like a good guy to me. Yeah? Tortured a man for his gold. All these different crimes he committed. Doesn't sound like a good guy. So should we then have 4 million, and maybe at one point in this country, 40 million people, trying to emulate him? No, we shouldn't. And we should be free to speak about that. And it's important we're free to speak about that. But the minute you try and speak about that, you're cancelled, you're censored, you're shut down, you're called Islamophobic. And they bring in the word racist. It's like, what are you talking about? What race is Islam? What race, what race is it? You, you can be a white Muslim, a brown Muslim, a black Muslim. So, yeah, I'm anti-racist, mate. I hate a white Muslim extremist more than a, more than a normal. <laughs> I'm done. So, for you, um, would you say that England's like a racist place then? I think England's one of the races. Again, I bring it back to my schoolmates, yeah? Mm. We've all grown up in Luton. 
all this word white privilege come about? Hmm? White privilege? What are you talking about? And we're all in the same group chat. I said, hold on, lads. Yeah? We've all grown up together. We're best friends through school. We haven't seen racism. Yeah, there isn't, there isn't, there isn't, I'm not saying, because I haven't grown up in a, I haven't grown up in an exclusively white area, yeah? So I know that when we formed the English Defence League, we noticed a few different things in different parts of the country. Certain parts of the country were more extreme, certain parts of the country were different, certain parts of the country couldn't differentiate between what we were talking about. In Luton, there is no racism, bruv. Mm. There is some race. what you think people walk around being hating black people. But up north though, like further up. I'll as there's you, like probably a token black like there's a black person every whatever. Probably is racism. There's racism mm. everywhere. There's racism in the Metropolitan Police Force, yeah? There's there's racism. It, when, when we have the English Defence League, people say, oh, there's a racist in the English Defence League, so it's a racist organisation. I say, no, there's golfers in the English Defence League. It's not a fucking golfing organisation, is it? I said, there's, there's racism everywhere, in every community as well, mm. yeah? All across the board. There's anti-white racism at a huge... When you go through the statistics and the numbers and the figures, I've done this when I went to Sarah Garvey's talk. I brought up five, the names. I, I, I asked who five people were. So can you tell me who this person is? And everyone just sat there. Mm. I said they were all murdered in racist attacks, but they're white. So you don't know who they are. Mm. I say, you know who Stephen Walker is? You know, you know who uh, Anthony Walker is and you know who Stephen Lawrence was? Of course mm-hmm. you do. I said, because those deaths have been jumped on and smashed to, to bits to, to also and and a, a narrative that was needed at the time with Stephen Lawrence yeah with yeah. his murder because of institutional racism which is a, within, yeah, within the, the Metro police force were quite um, corrupt with that weren't at they? that time they're very corrupt yeah? yeah that has then had the reverse effect I believe where it's tied the police's hands behind their back and then they've become we've seen like all the police standing by and not arresting rapists of young children through fear of being branded racist it has absolutely paralysed them from their ability to actually tackle certain crimes. And so, yeah, it's a complicated issue, but to say, are there racists in the UK? Of course there are. Mm. Would there be many people who have been victims of racism? Of course there is. Yeah. In all areas. Because did you um, see the Netflix documentary recently with uh, Meghan Markle and Harry? I haven't watched it because me, I don't really watch that show. No, I haven't watched it, but what do you think about her? Um, she's nice. Yeah, what, she's, fit? she's fit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah forget she's that good. though. She's good food. But uh, past that... I don't know. Do you think she was hated because she's not white in Britain? By a very small minority. I think it's more her character more than anything. I don't think it's a case of her being black. No, it's got not. She's not black, is she? Let's have it out. She's not black. Mm. Is she? She's like a quarter, eighth. I don't know. I don't know. She's got a tan. (laughs) Her dad's white. Her dad, who she says in the documentary, had nothing to do with her. Didn't he pray for your private education, darling? Like, I think that there's so much. character. There's so much in there that she's lied about. Because um, I remember what. Yeah, and what she, she does, Prince Harry. Yeah, she's he's just become a little... He's a simp, bro. He's a simp. I don't know he? what's going on with him. Well, that's what's going on. Yeah, he's, he's lost. Beca- he's not a man. He's, he's got no plot. masculinity left in him. Yeah, he's lost the plot. Yeah, I think that was even sad to be fair, just to see um, like what happened with the royal family. You know, just seeing like all of them pass, like the Queen, everyone, and, yeah. and just even his relation with them going. That was quite sad to see. Yeah, I, do, I think that's because they know he's not Charles's anyway. He's uh, what's his name? I don't know. No, the ginger, the ginger dude who Princess Diana was. Showing. I don't know. No, I'm I'm like, I'm, remember, I'm only twenty four. Oh, so this okay. is before I was even alive. Do you what's know what his mean? name? I don't Someone know. tell me his name. What's the ginger dude? Um, what's um, what's what's Prince Harry's dad's name? Put me on on here anyway. Has anyone said? Mm. Yeah, but, anyway, um, I'll send you who his dad is. He's his double. Okay. So I think they know that, he's not his... That's scary. No, it's his double. I didn't even know that. I, oh, it's, it's I come out 100% that, yeah, that she had an affair with this dude who was a, her butler or whatever at the time. Okay. And um, and he's Harry's dad. So how do you feel about both of them then? Prince Harry's uh, just an embarrassment to men. He was a lad, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. She is going to dump him at some point, yeah? She's got what she wanted. She probably had all this planned. That's what I think. That will break him. <laughs> that will yeah. actually fuck him up. And then what? Because he's lost everything really, ain't he? He's and then he come running back here, will he? Yeah, but maybe he didn't want. Maybe he didn't want the big. I don't know because my my views on the royal family have changed somewhat as well because Prince Andrew's a nonce. Um, I think that all the the elitism that's going on there. Mm. Um, but I did. I like William. I love the Queen. Yeah. Um, there was another question I was asked by someone. They was asking about. Um, I believe it's been confirmed and actually legalized now about uh, immigrants going to Rwanda. Yep. 
What do you, what do you know? What is that about? Like, do you know much about? It? I know you're more involved. I, I don't, I you don't, see me. My I, life is so simple. Like, I just come, I ask questions, I do my own research on certain things. But I've yeah, I've been told that apparently like immigrants are going to Rwanda now. Well, so they say. Things. When I see something like that, I just think it's a publicity stunt from the Tory government because the Tory government aren't interested in stopping these migrants coming in. Mm. Yeah, they're all benefiting, profiteering off it. All their families, all the people in charge of the contracts for the Serco, all the housing, all the hotels. It's all them. It's all them and their families. So, do they want to end the immigration into this country? No. What do you think? What do you think about the fact that they have asked you? We're gone. All these bun- boats of migrants. They say sixty percent of them Albanians. Yeah. Right. There's no war in Albania. So are are they refugees? Are any of them refugees? No. Bear in mind they've all come from France, so they're safe. Because yeah. a refugee, I don't know if you know. Yeah, refugee is isn't that like when you're fleeing from fleeing a, a war-torn kind of yeah. Yeah. Country. So why are they coming here? Because they want free housing, they want a better life. I don't blame them at all. I'd probably do it if I was in their situation. Yeah. yeah. I don't blame them. Yeah. Can this country, bearing in mind the poverty this country is in, bearing in mind the problems this country has, can this pro- pro- problem, can this country s- solve the problems? For poverty worldwide, can we bring? No, 15... no we can't save everybody. No, no so what, what we difference can't. are we making? Mm. Other than thirty percent of the hotels in this country are now full up with migrants. Thirty percent. If you go to any of those hotels, I've done it. There's no young. I women. watched that thing anyway that you you showed at the end. Remember that hotel you went to? Yeah, in yeah. That Documentary. Yeah. It was all, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's all men. They're all men. So, so what would you say? Because you said your mum's not from this country, right? My mum was not Irish. Immigrant. My mum was born here. My dad was born here. My grandparents weren't born. Here. I'm from Caribbean. Where um, else? Uh, Jamaica and St. Vincent. Okay. I went, so, I went to Jamaica. I got engaged in Jamaica, man. Oh, for real? You yeah. say you got engaged yeah. in Jamaica? I got Jamaica. engaged in Jamaica, yeah. Love that. Okay. Yeah, it's good, man. Yeah, nice. A nice place. I haven't been in a while. My it family went month. this year. But um, so with that being said, you come from a... Um, when my mum come here, no blacks, yeah. no dogs, no Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? When my mum come, come here, I'm not moaning about it. Yeah? 30, I, I, I've been brought up here. I've been schooled here, educated here. I'm English. I love this country. Mm. I, love it, I love it. I hate my government, yeah? And what I now realise which are now, I now realise, as I look at what our government's doing in Ukraine, I look at the lies that have been spouted to the public, I look at the COVID, I look at all of these lies, yeah? Everything. And I sit there and think, we invaded Iraq? So then I sit and think, okay, so to the Iraqis in this country at that time, when the bombs start going off and people start getting killed, which was a million people, all based on a lie, yeah? A lie that they knew was a lie at the time. Yeah, they wanted rid of Saddam Hussein. They wanted rid of Saddam Hussein. Why they want rid of Saddam Hussein? Probably over his petrol fuel strikes that he'd done. They wanted rid of Saddam Hussein. Yeah? They took out a million people. They didn't care just to put their own puppets in charge of that country. Gaddafi. Gaddafi was becoming the king of Africa. Yeah? Africa was flourishing. Gaddafi was, w- wanted his own currency. Yeah, heard about that. They had to take out Gaddafi. Yeah? Regime change again. What's that bore? What did that bring? That's brought the migrant crisis because Gaddafi used to stop them. Mm. Yeah? That, that opened the gates, which is all planned. Yeah? That brought the migrant crisis. So our British foreign policy and our government, who preached down to all of us, yeah, have played us all, got us all battering against each other whilst they open borders, whilst they destroy families, whilst they get everyone reliant on their state. They don't want success. They want yeah. everyone reliant on them. So and how I, does it work then? What, what's, what's the um, solution to it? I'm totally against the government man, now. I'm just, I, I, I can understand now. Mm. I understand. You see all these jihad attacks. I just think, well, what are you attacking innocent people? Why? You're attacking people, yeah? It, 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 like, your country was invaded. You're, you're, hell of, you're damn right, yeah? Millions, pe- million people were killed and displaced over a lie. Tony Blair's lie. Well, Tony Blair, that's who was responsible for it. He should be, he should be brought into court, right? But th- whilst well, you've done that, that, that was that many years ago, then you've done Gaddafi, now what are you doing? Now Zelensky? You're taking billions of pounds of our money and you're giving it to Zelensky? Zelensky shut down all the Christian churches. You know that. Yeah? He's locked up all the priests. He, we, we talk about democracy. He's imprisoned all the opposition. Yeah? There's no democracy right now in Ukraine. There's you fighting a globalist war with our money, the United States money, so that you can destroy that nation, so then you can get the contracts to rebuild it as well. But all of it so that you can take out Putin. That's what it's about, regime change. They want a regime change in Russia. And this is NATO fighting a war in all of our names, everything that's happening in our names, because it's our money that's funding it. And if they put it to a vote of the British people, do you think anyone want to go to war with Russia? No, nope. we don't. We don't want you funding it either. And I look at what's gone on. So I look at the way they played everyone. And sometimes I sit there and think, man, they played me because I was part of that division. I was part of that conflict at the same time because I was angry. I said, but I'm angry with problems that they've brought in, that they've purposely elected 
allowed to flourish. They allowed Islamic radicals to grow in Britain. They actually housed them. They acted because it suited them to when, when the Afghanistan war was going on with Russia. It suited us for a Mujahideen. It suited us for a radical Islamic terrorist. Even with Syria trying to get rid of Assad, we were funding ISIS. We were on the side of ISIS. Our government were on the side of ISIS because they wanted rid of Assad. What's Assad? He's a westernised liberal. He's actually quite cool with, when it comes to religion. Anyway, Christians are safe in, in Syria under his, his leadership. But all of this that's going on mm. all around the world all comes down to what? This globalist elite, their want and their need for war, their want and their need for control, and what they want, which is their one world, which is all the borders broken down and all of us acting as little slaves... That's what they want and that's what they're pushing for. And I think COVID hopefully has opened a lot of people's eyes to it. Yeah, it's been a mad period. The last mad. few years have been crazy. Well, if you, so and if you're one of the people now sitting there thinking, they, now you know they lied to you, question everything. Question what, what they told you about me. Question, why would, they, why would I need to be censored? Why would I need to be imprisoned? Why would I need to be totally blacklisted? Why can't I get a bank account? I can't live. Yeah? You can't even get a bank I account? I can't get a bank account. Wow. Can't, see, Why? Under what rules? Nat West closed me. They don't need to give you a reason. Nat West, HSBC, Barclays, all of them have closed me down. All of them. They didn't just close me down. They went as far as closing my dad down. They closed my wife down. Close you down. They, they, so if they want that now, when, they get, when we all get our digital ID, which they're pushing for, when they all get their total control, you will not be able to step out of line. People used to look at Russia and think, oh, poor, um, I mean, China, the poor Chinese. We're with, all the same, man. Poor Chinese with all their censorship. With, they don't have free speech. What well, do you same. think? We've got it. Yeah, it's just it, it's just literally a different flip of the coin. That's all. That's we're it. all yeah, we're all literally. What what's the word for it again? They just they live in a um. What, what they say? Uh, so they say we have like a democrat, right? But oh, they, they say we've got a democracy. Democracy, sorry. Uh, and cool. they've got a what's democracy. The word? We've now admitted that you killed JFK. The CIA have now admitted that there's a power above the American government, above the elected officials, that actually murders the elected officials. Why was JFK murdered? Because he was against the, the, the Vietnam War. He didn't want the war, right? You can't go in and not want the war because they make all their money off the war. So Donald Trump, when he went in, I know a lot of people say you would have read the bullshit, oh, he's a racist. He didn't want war. He didn't go to war with anyone. As soon as he leaves, <laughs> war everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Crazy. Everywhere. And everything they had to do to slaughter him and actually steal an election in front of the world's eyes. Steal it. But, they, but if they can kill people, yeah, if they can murder people. And that's why when you see Tate saying, Tate's got a lot of influence, yeah? Like, once I, I got worried once I got deleted, because I thought, once you get deleted, what next? Like, mm. So, but, I, but I'm not, never having the influence now, because hardly any people can hear me. Yeah. Hopefully, Elon Musk frees me soon. Yeah, because that's what I'm going to say. Hasn't he, so he hasn't unblocked your account? He hasn't yet. unblocked my account yet. Okay. What did your account actually get blocked for, though? Um, I, said that thir- I said that 90% of convictions for gang rape of men are Muslim, and 30% are called Mohammed. I'm uncomfortable fact. Where? In the UK. Oh, in the whole of the United States? In the whole of the UK. Wait, so 90%? 90% of convictions. Muslims make up 4% of the UK. 90% of the convictions are Muslim men. Yeah? Why? Right? Of, of rape? Of gang rape, yeah. 30% called Mohammed. Factually speaking. Factually speaking. Someone can go and check that. I don't check know. Check that out. I don't know anything. Come from Muslim to statistics from the Quillian Foundation. Someone report. check. Check it out, boys. Check that, because I'm all about facts. All about the facts. Check it out. So, so check that's, that. what I, I that, that's what I said. I said that, and then I also said, so that got me my warning, flag, and then I said, Islam promotes killing people. Yeah? Mm. Well, there's a hundred verses in the Quran that say kill non-Muslims. So it sort of does. It definitely does. And, that, and for that hard, uncomfortable truth, which is not allowed to be told, um, because... Because whilst they're breaking down our borders and flooding the country of God knows who or God knows mm. what they think or how their ideas are, you're not allowed to question any of it. You just got to go, yeah, this is great. But when you are tweeting this, what is your, like, your goal in it? Right, my goal in that is to ask the questions of... My, my goal is why are 30% called Muhammad and why are 90% Muslim men? Why are they not Jewish men? Why are they not Hindu men? There's, there's a reason why. Yeah? Mm. And I've researched all the reason to understand why. Because we have an alien culture which actually allows the rape of women, non-Muslim women, when at war, yeah, so there's four verses in the Quran that say outside of your four wives, you can take whatever the right arm, the, the arm of the sword possesses. You can enslave them, rape them. It's all in there. So I, I was exploring that because if we don't, if we don't understand why these men are doing it, why they have the views they do, why they look at non-Muslims the way they do, why they look at women the way they do, how are we ever going to combat it? Mm. How are you ever going to get to the bottom of it? If we just keep pretending, oh, Islam's peaceful, it's just a couple of little bad apples over here and they're not following the teachings of Islam. They're actually, like Michael Ada Bellagio, we spoke about him. Like he went mad in court when they said that he had betrayed Islam. He went He's mad. changed now, right, though? He's not um, radical anymore, is he? He's so they say. Yeah. Like his, they say that in 
layout. I saw it. So his brother contacted me. I was go- and then Scotland Yard come to see me. Said, um, that's why I know they're in your messages and in your DMs. <laughs> They said, um, you've been in contact with my guy, Blajo's brother? I said, yeah, why? Because I, I, he, he contacted me and I was talking to him after the killing. Because um, I think, according to the teachings of Islam, my guy, Blajo, as he, he handed a woman 56 verses in the street. After he killed Lee Rigby, he handed a woman 56 verses from the Quran that, that he says um, made him kill, kill Lee Rigby. Now, the verses, for example, Nick Clegg the next day on national TV after that killing, says in the Quran, it says, if you kill one man, you kill all of, you, all of humanity, yeah? Carry on reading that same verse. It says, unless they cause mischief. And then they must be executed. Yeah, that same verse. So we always talk about um, interpretation and mustn't take things out of context. And Nick Clegg stands on national TV the day after the killing and totally takes the Quran out of context and leads the country to believe it's a peaceful verse when actually it says kill people. Yeah? Now, causing mischief. What does causing mischief land? In Islam's eyes, Lee Rigby was a soldier who invaded a foreign Muslim land. Mm. He caused mischief. <laughs> mischief, actually, according to um, some top, 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 most recognised Saudi scholars, just means not believing in Islam, which is you. <laughs> You're causing mischief as well. Bro. Me? Yeah. Oh, shit. You don't believe in Islam. So, therefore, that verse I, I says, according to top know. Saudi scholars, that verse says that you've caused mischief, which means you're justifiable to be killed. Not in every Muslim's eyes. Of course not, yeah? Mm. But it's problematic. So, we must look and explore this. When, when people are literally quoting it and beheading people on the streets, we should start maybe having a look at what it says and trying to understand, is this a book of peace? Yeah, me personally, like, I haven't read it. I've got a lot of Muslim friends where I grew up. So, I've they probably ain't read it either, bruv. Yeah, I, I ain't read the Quran, so I can't really say... You know what I'm want saying? One. I can't have a good enough judgment on it for me no, to No, no, and you, no, you judge it. Like, most people in the UK will judge Islam on... Their yeah, friends and stuff. My friends are great, lad. So's mine, yeah? That doesn't mean this book's great. It doesn't mean Muhammad was good. Yeah? What I try and do is separate the two. Mm. And that's... Yeah. So let's get into um, the video that you sent me. Yeah. The, what is it? A documentary, would you it's say? It's a documentary. It's a film called Silenced. Yeah. Which silenced. is about me and everyone else being silenced. Um, even with that, I saw in the intro, I'll tell you what I thought about it in a sec. So yeah. in the intro, it said filmed by um, Infowars. Yeah, it's Alex Jones' film, yeah. Yeah, okay. It, so it, how did you, what, do you know him personally? Have you got yeah, I know Alex, yeah. Alex, so Alex, um, Alex sorted me out some camera equipment and uh, to help me with my work I do. When so. was you filming that? Like, that, that was back in the day, 2018, 19? Yeah, yeah. Like in the film. Yeah, and, and, then, and then I sent it to Alex Jones and at the minute I've been asking Alex, don't put it out, yeah? Mm. Alex has wanted to put it out but they've worded an injunction against me, which would mean that I'd go straight to prison for two mm. years. So... What did he think about that whole situation of silenced? Uh, he's, he... He said he watched it, right? He was, yeah, he was, of the, he was disappointed in me in the sense that um, I should put it out. Mm. So he said, it's bigger than... It's not about you. It's, he's right, isn't he? When you watch that film, that's not about me. Yeah, That's about what they're going to do if it affects their narrative. Now, what I realised with the Johnny Depp trial Johnny Depp was taken to the court in, in England, at the High Court, and they ruled that he beat his wife. The minute the world could see, and that's because it suited a narrative, a Me Too narrative, the minute the world could see all the evidence, Johnny Depp gets his name cleared. <coughs> My name's not been cleared. You've, told, you've been told I lied. Mm. All the British public have been told I lied. Yeah, you've watched the film. Yeah, I watched it. Um, prior to that, my mum had told me that there was some situation with a kid and you, what, recording in court? Is that apparently yeah, part um, of it? No, yeah, there is the kid and then I... Yeah, so basically there was a kid, Syrian refugee, instant, and then the media have all basically said I lied. Basically, that's what's been told to everyone. So I'm guessing that's what your mum... What, so did you tweet? Um, was it something you post? Where did you No, lie? I made a video or... saying you're being lied to. Okay. Everyone was donating 168 grand to this kid, and I said, no, mm. you're being lied to, lads. Yeah, uh, This isn't the full story. The kid does this, he does that. I gave some allegations against the child, which have been given to me by parents. Mm. I said, so you're not being told the full story. Yeah, You're being told he's an innocent little refugee, Yeah, and you're being told the other kid's a racist bully. That's what you're being told. That's not actually the reality of the situation. Yeah. So I made a video saying that and boom, they come for me. Not one other journalist told the truth on that in the whole country. So I saw it all blown up and just thought, well, everyone was controlled. Yeah. And you've seen now, you've seen the footage of how they were controlled. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I was actually unhappy with seeing, um, what's his name? Piers and Piers Morgan. Jer- Jeremy. I Jeremy don't know Vine. I, I'm not going to lie. I was fucked. Like, I actually be real. That was fucked. Because it's a piss take, isn't it? I think with us, we have, you have influence. So what yeah. you say what they say can have an effect on what people go and say yeah. and do, yeah. right? So with that, those people should have done more research, 100%, because they've actually got... It's not like me just talking to you here off camera. When you, when you see the video, basically Piers Morgan encourages his followers to uh, 
he wants severe ret- retribution against a child. And that severe retribution come, which you see in the film, by violent attacks at his house mm. and threats to kill and rape his family, and all encouraged by Piers Morgan, without one, sh- without one second of getting the full story. Yeah, that's wild. Especially because he condemns people all day, I think that's Yeah, crazy. no, he condemns me. All day, condemns that's crazy. Me. Have you ever sat down with him before? Yeah, I sat down with him, it blew up. He, Back uh, in the day, was it? It was, a f- uh, it was after the Manchester bombings. Um, oh, wow. It was the most watched episode of Good Morning Britain there's been. Mm. Watch it, it's good. Because uh, I pulled a Quran out and they all shit themselves. Why did you do that, Tommy? Why? Yeah, what was the purpose of that? Because we were there to talk about what had happened in Manchester and I was there to say, well, so you start, need to start reading this to understand what's going on. Yeah? Mm. And he was like, put the book down! And I could see he's obviously got people in his ears and they're all thinking, shit, bro, this, <laughs> that Muslims are going to riot and burn. That's what they're probably thinking. So like, ah! They all got they all got terrified. Mm. But it's a funny because I said, but it, he said, show show some God, show some damn respect. And this is where it gets me. I said, show some respect for this book. There's a hundred verses in this book that talk about killing me, bruv. What do you want me to, this this cartoon manual I'm not gonna respect it. It talks negatively about me. It tells people how to control me. I'm a non Muslim. It talks about how to control my family. So I, I will have an opinion of it. I'm not gonna apologise for having an opinion of it. And I think that people have been scared in silence about having an opinion about this. And any, you just have to look to anywhere. Look to Nigeria, look to any other country. Islam is blight in war, man. And we should be able to talk about it. And again, it doesn't mean all Muslims. Many of them are naive. As I said, I haven't read the book for me to be able to give a proper argument. Nah, cool. Do you get what I'm saying? When I've ha- if I've read it, I could sit here and read go the back biography and forth. of read the biography of Muhammad by Ibn Ishtaq. I urge anyone to do that. I done that. Really woke me up. It's the life of Muhammad by Ibn Ishtaq, one of the most recognised Saudi scholars in the world. Yeah. So this is his life. This is what he done. Not me saying it. It's not my opinion. This is Islam's opinion. Yeah. Read that and tell me if he's a good man. Yeah. Raped, pillaged, killed, murdered, looted, all of it. So anyway, so with the, um, the silence show, silence. are you actually? So is this dropping? Is this something? Silence is uh, it's dropping. It is dropping. I've yeah. just been trying. I've just asked Alex Jones to wait for legal reasons and um, to, for me to try and explore other avenues before he drops it. Mm. Now, it's out of my hands. If he, if he drops it, it's not. I'm not dropping it. It's not my film. It's Infowars film. Mm. Um, but he's been on at me even just last month. So. It's a good film. It was very, it was very um, insightful, to say the least. Well, if they lied about, a lot. If they lied about that, if they've lied about that. So oh, everyone in this country has been told that I lied, that a innocent Syrian refugee was racially attacked. Yeah? What you end up finding now is that all the teachers were paid, which is all on undercover recordings. That's what, yeah. That, it I've got to from. talk to you about that. <laughs> so with this, um, just to say, so he's literally got like a camera in his tire. I got cameras and he spoke to all the teachers or whatever. What happens to these teachers at this point when you drop this? Because they got paid NDAs to not talk. They and then they're to talking NDA. to you. So what from, happens there? From my point of view, yeah, that ain't my problem because they okay. shouldn't have took the money. Yeah, when they're being paid to lie, they, I, they, their words were it's silence in money. Yeah, but what are you being silent for? A kid's life was being destroyed. A lie was being perpetrated by our media and our politicians to the whole of this country. This country and the world was being f- spoon-fed lies. Yeah, and you knew it was a lie. Every one of you knew it was a lie. But you took 18 grand, you took 100 grand, 275 grand, yeah? You all took the money, yeah? And I've got the evidence you took the money. And you know I've got the evidence you took the money. So at the same time, I felt bad because it's got, they're, they're going to be in trouble. Yeah, they're fucked. Yeah, they're going to be in trouble legally, but will they? What, the court? They're going to take them through the courts? when if, the, if, if everyone, the problem is that everyone in the country won't get to see it. You'll only see the headline. So you'll see the headline saying Tommy Robinson breaches injunction. Yeah? That's all you'll see, probably, because the film will be censored on all, bo- on all platforms so that no one can see the truth. The truth is that the media run with a lie, the politicians push the lie, because that lie suited their narrative. Their narrative for open borders, their narrative that English are racist and victims are Syrian, that narrative is what they wanted to spoon-feed so they can continue the open border policy, so they can continue bringing in migrants into the country, so they can continue bringing your wages down, your cost of living down, and create the crisis which we're going to be in, so then everyone, when we're in such a crisis, is going to be crying out, saying, please help us, please help us, and then the state will step in and give you all a basic living wage. And that's what they want, and that's where they're pushing us all towards. And they want it to get so bad for all of us that people will be crying out for that. And when I watch with COVID, I watch what happened with COVID, I think they're right. Yeah, they will. Mm. Everyone just wants to take the money and sit at home. So scary times ahead. Yeah, definitely. 100%. As I said, that was very insightful to say the least. There was a lot you can learn and yeah. see. As I'm a factual well, if you person, saw that, because right? you know there's yeah. another case. There's another case if you Google Tommy Robinson's uh, to do with a journalist. I'm not allowed to mention her name because I'll go to jail again. Yeah? I created another film 
So what they've done is they're not happy with censoring me on here. They're not happy with deleting me. To prevent me showing people, they then get you in the court, behind closed doors, yeah? get you in the court and give you these injunctions. So if you breach these injunctions, then you just go to jail. And they're that confident that without, without your own social media, without the ability to tell anyone, even if you breach them and tell people the truth, you just the headlines that they pump around the globe <laughs> is that you breached an injunction, you breached a harassment order, you breached this. It's insane. Mm. So that's so I, I know that's happening here. It's going to come to America. They're going to go after all the um, alternative journalists in America. They'll go after Andrew Tate somehow. Mm. They'll be looking at how they can shut him down right now. He knows that. Because with that, um, yeah, with the show, did you, so you didn't really show at the end of it. Did you end up paying? Did you have to pay for I haven't paid anything, no. Okay. No, but, I, but the, judge, the um, court I was ordered to, to pay over right? one million pounds. Okay. So I was bankrupt. So at that point, I was bankrupt. They cleaned me out, broke, uh, financially finished me, mm. yeah, over a lie. When you watch that film, it's a fucking lie. There's no ifs and buts. The evidence shows it's a lie, yeah. But yet you've bankrupt me. You've used, you've weaponized our judiciary, our corrupt judiciary. You've weaponized it to target a citizen. Yeah, like they bankrupt me. Like Katie Hopkins, they bankrupt her. Yeah, like if you got big enough, if you got big enough, and you started talking out against the narrative that they want you to talk out about, they'll come and bankrupt you. They bank- they would have bankrupt Andrew Tate, but he sort of like outmaneuvered them with his little chest brain. Yeah, <laughs> because they they close his banks. They close yeah, yeah, they close the servers. Bro, my banks have been getting closed. I'm <coughs> yeah, not gonna lie. Have they? I've, for like three, four. He could, bro. How much times have I had my bank account closed? Every year, <laughs> that is mad. You must be. You no, must. I you, speak. I don't know what I do. Okay. I don't know what it is. I actually don't know. Because if you start Maybe trying, if you start I've trying done, to direct black youth, yeah, away from criminality, you start trying to get them to excel. You start teaching them that they're being enslaved, yeah, mm. by the government. Yeah, yes, they, are. they are breaking your family. Story. They want you reliant. They want you in the justice system. They want you in. They they bought in their their their. Um, the, the you know the within the prison system what is it called when you used to get a life sentence IPP I, you, they bought that in so they can get a guaranteed income yeah you've got poor kids now sitting doing 10 years for a two year sentence they don't give a shit they want that they want the gang bangers they want the drill artists warring each other mm. they want it all controlled they're happy for it you know when they're not happy when you start excelling when you start seeing that you can do better when you start listening to people who are telling you to do better, who are telling you to bring your children up properly, who are telling you to the likes of Andrew Tate, that's why he's become such a such an influential figure for the youth. Yeah, he's they don't somehow, want men being men. He somehow managed to just change that whole thing of getting cancelled. And yeah, you know he's done so well thing. by converting to Islam. It's like all the left who he's were got, cri- he's got the biggest side on him. I can't lie. He's like, got the biggest side on him, and yeah, all the yeah. all the left who were criticising him. Yeah, well now to be Islamophobic, you start talking about his views on women now. Yeah, yeah you can't. You oh, can't. he got you. Oh, got you. <laughs> he yeah. absolutely nailed you. You can't. Do you think with him it's genuine in terms of like the um, conversion? Um, I think, I think that he, I think that the views that he believes, many of them fit, um, many of them fit well with Islamic teachings on the, on those sort of principles. Mm. So when you listen to what he says, uh, yeah, I believe that it, it, it suits, very, it fits very well. Mm. So I, I respect him. So. Yeah, no. I don't respect Islam. So I guess I can, with I can respect individual Muslims as well. And, yeah. and like I've got mates who I love. Yeah, it doesn't mean I like your, the ideology you follow. Yeah, you probably don't like the ideology I follow. Hmm? They oh, in general, yeah, with yeah. people. Like most of my mates weren't in the EDL either. My mates, yeah, I built a mass following, but my friends weren't politically that bothered about. It. Yeah, the thing with EDL, would you? So, is it fair to say? Because I always grew up as if it was like a racist white group never that was, just bro. hate never, everybody. Never was. Like, that if was you come to was. any demonstration, it would have threw your head. Yeah. You get heroes welcome. Yeah, that that was the. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, though? but, that, that, was that, the but that's purposely. That that's the given. narrative purposely put out. Mm. Purposely, you are co- constantly fighting the media who are constantly telling the public it's a Nazi organization, and you're constantly trying to battle it within. In the end, when I left in 2015, I left because I thought, do you know what? I was fed up because there was a lot of arseholes who joined the EDL. Yeah. And I, I constantly had to keep being the face of them. But mm-hmm. there were some amazing people. There were some of the best people I've ever met in my life. Some what made them, them arseholes, though? Like, what bit of them was arseholes? They were racist scumbags. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to figure out. So you're saying the racist people were arseholes? Yeah, they were scum- yeah, yeah. Yeah, total scumbags. And I was constantly battling them. Yeah, mm. So I'd battle them. So we had the English Defence League. When, when they'd raise their head, they'd get kicked out. Yeah, So in the end, I'd kick them out. And then they create their own groups. You had the NWI, North West Infidels. The North East Infidels. You had all these little, all these different little splinter groups who would surround the organisation who kept hating me because I was a leader. And then when I went to jail, I got put in jail and then I looked at the demonstrations that were going on when I was in jail and all these groups were back. 
Mm. And that's when I come out, so I'm leaving. I'm done with it, man. You just kind of just disassociated yourself I'm not doing it. with it, yeah. I'm fed up of being there. I'm fed up of... I'm not willing to be the face for them. Yeah. But yeah, you'd see the headlines would say English Fence League supporters fight each other. No. That's... Say, say for example, a Blackburn demonstration. I can send you the video of this, yeah? I went up there with the intention, and this was a uh, Channel 4 doing a documentary, Proud and Prejudice. Okay. And it was... I remember I filled up a, a bottle, a litre bottle of vodka, yeah, with water. I'd just taken the... I filled up with water... And then we're meeting these journalists for the first time where our coaches were meeting to go to Bradford, to go to um, Blackburn for a demonstration. So as I walked out of the journalist's lair and I nicked this litre bottle of vodka, but it was water, and I threw the bottle over my head. I said, right, now I'm ready for demo, yeah? Because mm. I know that then these two journalists are like, what the fuck, yeah? <laughs> but I'm just... And then they goes, oh, I goes, right, I'm Tommy. And they're thinking, he's just nicked a litre of vodka, yeah? <laughs> but I shook their hands. And a year later, I told them it was water, but... I said, and he goes, what's going on today? I said, well, we're kicking off today. Mm. And he goes, what do you mean we're kicking off? I said, you'll see, we're kicking off. And we got to Blackburn and I held up a Sikh lad's hand, Gurmit Singh, great lad, yeah? held up his hand and said, if you don't like what you see here, you're in the wrong place. Yeah? This is the English Defence League. Yeah? And you see you fuckers, and I started reading out their names. What was it Alan Smith, was it? I started reading out their names. I said, show, you, show yourself, because there was a group within our organisation, 30, okay. 40 of them, yeah? militants, yeah? who kept coming to our demonstrations, yeah? Who hate me? I was a race trader. Yeah, I'm a Zionist shield. All these different things. You hate me, but you 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 ain't got the bollocks to go out on your own. Yeah, because people will know what you stand for. So you're in our crowd. So I called them out, and it kicked off, man. I come off the stage. I headbutted one of them. That's one of my offences. I got done for uh, an assault. But and then there's a picture of them all. That when I got back to the coach, they're all wearing skull and crossbones t-shirts, which is combat in. We're all fighting them, and then we get back on the coach. And these two journalists <laughs> who think I'm must have come, I've just done a bottle of vodka, but they think I'm mad at you. They're, 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 they're like, they're, they're white. And they're like, I can't believe what I've seen. I said, what? They said, you're fighting the far right. I said, yeah, you fuckers keep calling us far right. Yeah? Mm. So stop calling us far right. But all the headlines of that said EDL fight each other. Yeah. So, so when you've, because this surely isn't the first time you've spoken out like this. No, nah, just people just. People cut, pick and choose what they want to believe. People, yeah, people pick and choose what they want to believe, what they want to hear. Mm. It's like I'm, I, I have lots of mistakes I've made, lots of errors. I'm not perfect. I always say I don't, I don't claim to be sitting here polishing my halo. So I've had trouble. I've been in trouble. I'm not a perfect person. And if I wasn't the person I was or hadn't had the upbringing I had, I'd have. I'd have bowed out and surrendered at the first punch in the nose. Yeah, mm. it's because of my upbringing, because of my mentality that I've continued to lead that organisation. That I've continued to speak out against all the threats, and I continue to sit here now talking about it. That's why. So, but I don't claim to be anything I'm not. Yeah, um, but I'm so, not racist. Someone asked me a question, and I assume this is because this is something that you've said. Um, it says, "Ask him to explain why he believes poor white people are the most oppressed in the UK." Is that what you've said? Uh, I say that poor. I say that white. So white children on free school meals are the biggest academic underachievers. Yeah? So if we had this institutionally racist country, which, I, which is what I had this conversation with my friends, I said, no, no, white, white working class kids are the biggest academic. That's a f- I think it's something like 13% of white kids on free school meals uh, end up going to university and 40% of black kids. Something like that. That's the parallel, yeah? Right. So black children are far more likely to go to university who are poor than white children. Okay. White working class children are the biggest failed children in this country. Yeah, that's that's a fact. You can go check the education system. That's so that's failed that in what sense? Failed in the fact that uh, through their education, they're failing. They are the biggest underachievers. Yeah? What's that due to? What I believe that's due to being forgotten and neglected. So I believe that so many groups have been set up, so much has been set up for minorities after minorities after minorities that mm. white working class, which is a section of children, are just psh, don't matter, irrelevant. Uh, to the councils who the councils have these diversity quotas to match these access these figures to match which they're concentrating which rightly so on on, on certain communities that, that were under underrepresented and in, in in concentrating on those communities they failed this community mm. so i'm not saying that's through any fault of any of the other communities i'm saying that's what's gone on do you see yourself um living here forever uh no yeah i used to mm. would you think would you say england's a fallen state the UK. England's fucked, bruv. Mm. Look at it. Look at the state of it, man. Yeah, I, I'm gone. It's soon. embarrassing. I'm going real soon. Yeah, but what... Yeah, and that, as I keep, I keep saying is, 
What's the alternative? So when I, I talk against Islam, yeah? I don't want people to convert to I'm Islam. going to Dubai, bro. Yeah, you're going to Dubai, <laughs> I'm yeah? Going Dubai, yeah, I can't. <laughs> I, I got no, I'm not going to lie. I've not got no issues with like My head will come Muslim off. or Islam. Yeah. I have not done enough research to have that. And me, I'm not going to I'm a very chilled person. You're very passionate about yeah, what yeah. you believe in. You're yeah. standing for something. To be fair, maybe I just don't stand for shit. So it's just like whatever. Nah, it's, it's, I don't I, know what it is. Like, I, you know what I mean? I don't have that. Like, I, I love everybody. But obviously, I know there's good and bad in everyone and everything. That's just the reality of it. And Dubai, and the Islam in Dubai is a very different, um, or the Muslims in Dubai. Yeah, it's not. Um, it's not. Uh, what well, they still it? have the Islamic law, but what I but mean is, strict, what I mean is, there's not even that many people from Dubai there. It's all no, it's a tourist. Rest of, rest it, of the world it, it, it's a tourist place. But yeah, now me personally, I have no issues, and as I said, a lot of my friends are Muslim. And, it, and, and um, the problem so is, what is the alternative? Got, uh, what is what is the alternative with what is the alternative that we currently, as the West, yeah. are pushing? It's an LGBTQ plus non-binary blue purple hair mess that's what we are creating and that's what we are trying to push and then again i bring it i think tate said it to me when he when he converted and i was like bruv he said do you want your son to come home a tranny or a muslim bruv <laughs> oh, is that what you said to you <laughs> oh, <damn>. <laughs> <laughs> i said neither <laughs> that's funny actually. yeah i know <laughs> yeah i know it. i know but it's but yeah, but, 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 real, but, but the, yeah, in the concept of it and the concept of it they are weakening us so much yeah they are censoring us so much. The the elitist plan, um, unless Muslims unite with non-Muslims, unless non-Muslims unite with Muslims, because I, I said the whole way through the sexualization of kids thing, in the schools, in the education system, the non-binary, the Muslims will be our allies. In this mm. battle, they'll be our allies. Yeah? Because they, they ain't going to take it. They ain't going to take it. But that's what they want. They want to sexualize everyone's children. And um, they're going to hit a few problems there. Yeah, I don't see myself staying here, man. Like, even though I'm born here, my parents are born here, I, I don't see myself staying I here. I always did, no, and no I way. always wanted to fight, even for Luton. And now I'm just like, fuck. Like, Bro, you can't put the whole world on your shoulders, I'll be honest. This yeah. is bigger than you. I know, it's been bigger. I know. It's bigger I felt than like everybody. it's been on my shoulders for a while. It's but, bigger than everybody. I can't save everyone. And no, their, their whole I, plan, their that plan guy, that they want, which honest. they're pushing forward. COVID, have you had the vaccine? Uh, yeah, I got two. No, bro. I did, I did, I did. I'll no. Shall I tell you why? Shall I tell you why I got it? At the time... To travel? Nah, so me, I was like a proper gym lad. And at the time, people in my gym that were like my age were getting... They never had the vaccine, but they were getting fucked by it. And like, they was like, oh, I can't even walk up the stairs. Yeah. They was just like exhausted. Just flew, they was just fucked. What do but you they think was that, fucked what do you think for now? months. What do you think now about the vaccine? I kind of wish I didn't take it. I caught COVID or whatever um, in July of... Yeah. This shit, oh, it fucked have me Have you up. had two jabs in? Yeah. Don't have I mean, any more. I've never get no more. No, no, Don't no have any more. I'll take my chances of it. Don't, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. So the influence that they put on people and I'll the way they, they pressured people, whether it be through travel, whether it's through family, all mm. this pressure they put on people when they knew it was bullshit. Yeah, but, me, I just took it, as I said, because pe and people we, my age was getting it and it was fucking them up and they never had no jab. So, and I was in a very, I was at like the peak of my health. So I was like, I don't even want this to throw what me mean is you At the peak of your health, I think wouldn't have done nothing to you. Mm. Fit young man, but then when I caught what, when I caught it, that fucked me up. Did you caught it after the vaccine? Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. everyone else. <laughs> it's but bad. then it's weird, bro, because like even with that, like my mum had the vaccine, she never got as bad as me. Like it's very weird, and she had the shit vaccine. Do you get it? Like yeah. it was just weird. There were so much technicalities. I don't know because some people had the vaccine and it done them. Mate, it's all just that, all money, I don't man. Big know. pharma just absolutely manipulating the whole world. I don't know. I wouldn't take any more anyway. Good. I'll take my chances with COVID if it. So should everyone whatever. else? Fuck it, bro. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, fu that fucked me up. Did you catch it? Yeah, I, well, I had the flu. Like okay. everyone else has the flu each year. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They just renamed the flu, didn't they? I don't know. Whatever renamed the flu. Fucked me up, bro. I Excess deaths right now, mm. died suddenly, is what's going through the roof. And it's all healthy people. I think a 37-year-old just died of a heart attack. So footballers dropping dead, all these different things. People who wouldn't have died. And then the media never want to draw the dots together. Because the dots are that there's been a mass conspiracy worldwide to force a vaccine, yeah, which isn't tried and isn't tested, which is affecting people's immune system and health for future God knows how long. Do you know what I mean? So I, I never had the vaccine. I will never allow my kids to have the vaccine. I'd kill someone before they let my kids have that vaccine. You're not putting an experimental and just see what I got for the, especially for the black community. Mm -hmm. You look through the history of these vaccine companies. Yeah, of course. They, they tested on black people. Yeah, it was mad back in the day. Back in the day. The oh, same that company. The one I remember. The same that. company. Yeah. Oh, I swear, was that the same, same company. So this same company that tried and tested shit on, on Africans and then, and, and all these people who said black lives matter in America, yeah? the biggest proportion of people who weren't getting the vaccine in the United States, young black males. Yeah. And then you don't want them to be able to work. 
So you say you care about their lives, but because of their historical grievances with vaccine companies, they don't want to take the vaccine, and now you're happy to throw them all out of work. I just think the whole thing was a hypocrisy everywhere. So yeah, don't take the vaccine. I love that like, geezer song. Don't take the vaccine. Don't take the vaccine. Song made a song about that. You know, he was going outside schools, man. He's a legend. Okay. It's a black guy in London. That's funny. I haven't even seen yeah, that. Yeah, man, he was doing it. Yeah, no, nah, I'm going to take my chances with it and just fight it. Like, if yeah. I caught it again, I think I'd be more prepared. They want you to have 10 fucking jabs, right? Yeah, no, nah, nah, no way. That's crazy. i never done it. Like, some people just done it to fly out, which I think is yeah, crazy. Well, they people should never have been put in that position. Out. They mm. should never have been forced to. So, as for, like, the older vaccines and stuff, you know, the ones that you take on your kids and stuff, what do you think about those ones? I think that they cause, um, what's it called? Um, autism. Yeah, autism. I've, every one of my friends has got an autistic child. Mm. Literally everyone. Literally, I mean, I'm not joking. I mean, like, I must know. I think there's a lot of undiagnosed autism. Seven right of my powers well. have got autistic kids. Mm. And I believe that if you look at the rate, it comes from when they started vaccinating everyone. And that's something you had to have, right? Yeah, you had yeah. You have to. Uh, my mum didn't let them in school. My mum always said, I, ne- "I pulled you," and I had big arguments with everyone about it. And she went to her doctor, and her doctor said, "You do what you feel is right in your heart." He said, "She said to her doctor, sort of direct her to say, don't take the vaccines." But um, I look at their va- what I've seen now with the last two years in my lifetime with these vaccine companies. I'd never trust one of them ever again. I would never trust a vaccine again. So, and it's a sad state of affairs where we're in a situation where you can't trust the people who we're meant to look to to govern us. You're meant to listen to scientists. You're meant to listen. You only listen to the people they want you to listen to. And who's listening? The scientists are sitting on my TV telling me about this vaccine. Well, who's funding his hospital? Bill Gates. Who's funding this? It's like when you follow the money, there's just one big massive monopoly. Mm. So, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I think it's disgraceful that we're in a situation where we can't trust the media, can't trust Big Pharma, can't trust anyone. Where would you say, um, in terms of like the Western world or England, say, for example, who would you say that we should... Is there anyone that you would say that's leading the world right now that you say, like, you know, we need to be more like them? Yeah. Because England was uh, obviously hungry. a great place hungry. back in the day. Hungry. Hungry. What well, how comes? He's encouraging people to... He's encouraging marriage within families. So if you... If you if you're, and then he encouraged to have children, yeah? So if you get married and then you're still to give up three years, he'll give you £30,000, something like that. For each child you have, you might get another ten grand. So he's encouraging families. Whereas what we've done in the West, we've encouraged families to break up. We break up, we give you more benefits. Mm. Yeah? You separate from your dad because we don't want the mum and dad. Because we, we haven't wanted a strong family unit. When I say we, the global elite, do not want a strong family unit because a strong family unit will rebel their, their bullshit. Yeah? Because when you've got a strong family home, you're harder to control. They want your women out of work, they want the men out of work, and they want the state bringing up your children. So I think Hungary, when I look at Hungary, uh, zero crime, same as Poland. Yeah? Same as Poland. Yeah, you been to Poland? No. Nah. Oh, it's beautiful, bro. It's good. Nah, I don't think I'd go either, you know. Why? You think they're no. racist? I've heard that. Yeah, but you'll hear... No, nah, and to be fair, no, fact, they fuck are. that. Yeah, 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 I went to school with a bunch of Polish people. It was black versus... No, it was Polish versus everybody. Was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In school, 100%. Black, white, Asian versus Polish in school. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, there was fights. Like, that was all the time. And if they caught... A black boy, they would say some mad shit. Like, I learned a lot of Polish. Like, I know Chesh is high, Chesh is fuck. And all this madness, but like, not all of them are like that. Obviously, like everybody. But back in school, yeah, it was mad. It was mad. I ain't gonna lie. So, I've not even got the best representation. representation. But I've not got no issues with them. Like, personally, I've got Polish friends and it's cool. Yeah. I take it too personal. But as long as, it. For me, as long as you're not physically harming me, which no one is, but I they were on fuck, it. Bro. Like in the prison system, because they're the only really lads that are on it as well. Or what? Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, like, is that a racist place, though? Like, is that somewhere a black person could go? And isn't that the same with no, Hungary no, as well? No, you know what? I went, I went there with my mate. We went, oh, fucking hell. Black mate? Simon, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bruv, no, he got a hard time. We went there for an England game in Katowice. So, Fuck bearing in mind, these, these people have never seen a black person. They're all taking <laughs> photos with him. <laughs> yeah, they do that. Like Simon, bro. They do but it in Sully China. Was fine. All, all of Sully, Sully, who's uh, Kenyan, half, half Kenyan, he was fine. He didn't really get any, anything that Simon did. Yeah, Simon got... What, so it's like, see, like a different complexion or something? Yeah, Simon's black. Okay. Oh, so is the Kenyan person like more Asian? Yeah, it looks Asian. Yeah, because I think, like, yeah, their background, a, a lot of them have yeah. moved over. But surely, uh, but, but, yeah, Simon got a hard time. But I, I figured it was because we was in Katowice, which is not like going to the capital. Mm. It's, uh, they had never seen a black person. Yeah, chocolate boy, no, chocolate boy. I will not chocolate be boy, Chocolate boy, chocolate boy. I will not be No, what they're saying? The kids, yeah. Chocolate yeah. <laughs> They're calling it chocolate <laughs> wear. Yeah, you will not catch me in Poland. You won't catch me in Hungary. Nah, yeah, I, I, I ain't I, fucking with that. Nah. Yeah, no, nah, I'll take it. I think that's the one thing with us. Like, if, if the thing with England, especially like London, Luton, these places and these cities, like, it is actually multicultural. It's very mixed. So it's like, I don't stand out as much. Whereas if I go to a country like he that. You don't stand out like that. Yeah, but I'd say, I'd, yeah. Well, I always say with Luton, yeah? I say, like, 
when you say we had Angela Merkel said it, David Cameron said it, multiculturalism failed. Yeah? Mm. When they're saying that for me, it's a weak, cowardly way of saying Islam's failed. Yeah? Because I wouldn't say when you come to Luton, all the other cultures have failed to integrate at all. Yeah? I'd say, and when people people bring it back, so my opposition or people within my own group would bring it back and say, now hold on, what about the crime rate? What about the black crime rate? What about this? All, that, all this comes from single homes. All of these problems of poverty, of gang violence, of all this comes from fatherless homes. Yeah? And that would be similar figures, I believe, if you had white fatherless homes at the same rate that you have the black fatherless homes. Mm. So multiculturalism has failed. Not if you line up my 30 friends, it hasn't. Mm. So Islam failed. Yeah, well, I know you got your thing with Islam. I, like, I ain't read the Keep Quran. Keep Islam. <laughs> Look, shout out to my friends that I'm Muslim. That's all I'm going to say. They, to be <laughs> that's fair, right, that's why I nah, still like you. My friends, that's, no, I like you. I my like friends, you. no, I'm sitting down with you. And to be fair, no one actually was mad with me. No, no one was mad with me. No, it won't be the Muslim lads that are mad with you. Yeah, and it won't, it, it'll be these no little white, pink haired liberals. Oh, he's a racist. No, no platform for yeah. racism. Obviously, don't get me wrong. They called you a brick and everything. Like they had their opinions on you. But like, it is what I it am. is. Yeah. And my thing was was just like look, at times. If, if there was anything that you want me to bring up personally, that's I'll like racist or mad. Do you know what I mean? But to be honest, there wasn't much feedback with that. But it's like, look, it, it's better. It's better to sit down and discuss all issues. Mm. But most Muslims, I sit down to, I agree with most things. Yeah, mm. but I have got a strong belief, and that belief is about Islam, which is a book. Yeah, and I'm allowed that belief. We live in Britain. Have you ever um, gone to Speaker's Corner? Uh, I have. Yeah. Really? I have. Yeah. You wouldn't go now, though, would you? Why not? You'd go now. Yeah, why not? Because when did you like last go? Like I would just assume oh, no, that about was... two years ago. Oh really? Okay, calm. You're cool then. No, I went there, shut the whole of speakers' corner down. Yeah. Well, I get the usual things. You know, like, we're gonna kill you. I, look, it doesn't work, lads. Yeah. It's like you know, if you tell me not to draw a cartoon of Muhammad, I'll draw ten. Okay. So once people understand that this intimidation doesn't work, doesn't work with me. Yeah. Doesn't work. Doesn't work with many real men. Yeah. Mm. They're not gonna be scared and intimidated in silence. So let's just have the debate. Let's just talk. Why the drawing though? No, I mean, I mean like... Have what? you done that? No, I haven't done that. Thank no. fuck. No, but if someone told me not to, I'll say, if someone said, you can't draw that, or I'll kill you, well, I'll draw 10. You're not telling me what to Why? do. Okay, you, I hear you it. Govern, but like, you don't govern what but I But is do. there any form of like respect, though, with that, where it's like to say, okay, cool, this is... like I'm sure you have some boundaries with yourself. There but must be some with boundaries. With free speech, it's like, but, but we're allowed to mock Christianity, you're allowed to mock Jesus, mm. and, and everyone does it and celebrates and laughs about it. Yeah? You're not allowed to talk about Islam. Oh well, yeah, we are. And I'll talk about it. The thing with free speech, which someone said, which is very true, is that obviously it has repercussions, so you can do it. But if someone chooses to do a madness behind Yeah, which that, is fine as individuals choose to do madness. Yeah. But when you've got institutions who are then limiting free speech, that's where the problem comes. Yeah. Okay, so if, if I want to draw a cartoon of Muhammad and some Muslim wants to come stick sand in my head, yeah, then that's my consequence. Uh, uh, but when the government wants to suppress or attack me... Or, incite, or, or silence me or prevent me from being able to express my freedom. It's my freedom of speech. You don't get to choose what that is. Yeah, no one gets to choose what that is. As long as I'm not inciting violence, yeah, comedy is one of them. Dark humour is one of them. Yeah, we, we, should be able, we should be free to talk about, criticise and mock whatever we want. You can't mock Jesus and we can't... You, you can't say it's all right to mock Jesus and not all right to mock Mohammed. Yeah? You can't. Uh, but currently that's where people are. Mm. And the reason for that, because they're scared. Because they're scared because people don't want to kill them. And I'm sorry, but we're not backing down to your medieval mindset. Well, with that whole drawing things of madness, anyone that's that I've seen do it is yeah, that ain't ended well. But even past that, I don't know why anyone would do it. I'll be honest. If if it's gonna offend, and um, like, what is the whole point in that? But how do Shit, you? That's stupid. Well, like, some, why would some, you do that? Some things. That's so weird. A Muslim, a Muslim, giving his view on Islam might offend a non-Muslim. Wait, offense. Mm. We we have to be offended. But I'm we saying that's their god, more. right? What's that? That's their god, right? That's their prophet. So someone drawing their god, if they, I don't like, why even? I don't know. Everyone yeah, should, should be free to. Me, should be, it should be against the law too. Is it against the law to do no, that? No, it shouldn't be. Do you, do you think it should? I don't think it's against the law. It's I just think that do what you do, but obviously there will be repercussions to that shit. It's just stupid. I don't know why anyone would do that anyway. In the first place, I haven't done it. But what thank, I'm, thank what, you. I'm using it as an example. Please don't do it as well. I'm using it. Pass me a pen and paper. This <laughs> one, <laughs> yeah, I'm, don't do it. I'm using it as an example where if you think that the threats of violence or intimidation it's like i'll give another when black lives matter hit off i said like i went to that debate in brixton yeah mm. and then some black guy called, called levi was on sky news and he's talking about me and he's got a fe- uh, peacock's gym you know the boxing gym yeah yeah a very well respected gym so and he's on he's on sky news and he's saying oh, i'd like to talk to Tommy robinson so i put a post out saying yeah i'll come meet you i'll come talk to you so i got contacted and he told me to come to concept gym yeah in east london so i'm on the way down my cameraman 
And we're driving in, and I see mosque, mosque, mosque. I'm thinking, no, this is probably ain't a good idea. Yeah? Mm. We pull up at this derelict gym. Looks derelict anyway. Concept or concept or something like that. They lift these shutters up, and there's lads stood. stood I'm out of the car already. And there's lads stood with balaclavas. I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't need this, man. I'm there with my cameraman, yeah? and I'm like, bruv. And I, walk, I walked up, I said, all right, lads, what's going on? And there's this lad put his hand out and he squeezed my hand it's so pathetic yeah? he squeezed my hand as hard as he could squeeze my hand like it's yeah you're right Tommy I'm like you fuck you knob yeah? and I said alright and he goes sit down so I went into this gym and they pulled the shutter down and then I, I'm shitting myself I'm thinking what am I doing here why have I volunteered myself to come to East London and just walk into this he puts a hammer on the table and he says at any time this, ham- this hammer can come off this table and smash you straight over the head yeah. And this is, he goes, this is de radicalization, Tommy. I'm like, all right, sound. So he went, went on this big rant and I said, bruv, do you know what's going to happen when I walk out this door? If you let me walk out this door, do you know what's going to happen when I walk out this door? I'm going to say exactly the same as I'm saying now. This hasn't worked. This ain't going to work. Yeah? So that's the point I was making on the cartoons. And then this is some clown. I didn't know who he was at the time. I looked him up. He was a former radical, yeah? part of the prevent scheme. All this bullshit works with the government. But he thought he was such a gangster. And I, Levi, I said to Levi, like, bruv, he, he goes, you, you'll get eaten up by the youths out here. And I, I have some concept where people seem to think, must think I'm from some posh, educated area. I was like, like man, I'm from Luton Town. I, I know what life's like. Yeah? And I've grown up on the streets. I don't need you to tell me how gangster the streets are. And then, um, and then the black guy, Levi, I said, this, this geezer was a Muslim. I thought, oh, fuck, I've come here to talk about Black Lives Matter. You've got some Muslim squeezing my hand like some fucking road man. But yeah, anyway, and that's, so that's the point I was making is the threats don't work. Okay, they're not going to work. People have realised that now. I don't really get that many people threat me anymore now. I actually have many Muslims shake my hand. So I don't like you, but I respect you. Because mm. at least you're saying what you think. Most people are smiling, smiling to their faces and then saying they hate Islam behind their back. So with you, like, when you look at it, do you think this was all worth it then? You look at all the stuff that you've gone through, like, for example, because um, some people may see this, may not have seen it, but, like, within that documentary, you know, people are bricking your house. You, I'm sure you've had mad threats even mad past, stuff. like, people threatening to kill your wife, your kids, yourself. Um, you've had people, as you said, plot to kill you. Was this all worth it to you? Um, yeah. Yeah? It's worth it. Is it worth it? And that's nothing, really, yeah? So when well, I try to justify it to myself, because a lot of time I'm trying to justify things myself because I know I'm putting my family in harm's way. And I know I've given my children a pretty difficult position to be his children. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I know I've done that. Yeah? So sometimes I'm trying to, maybe I'm trying to justify it to myself. But I'm thinking, like, people sign up for the British military or throughout history they've joined in conflicts and wars. They're getting shot at. They're getting bombs going off. They've got a life expectancy of a minute when they're running into beaches to fight against Nazis. All of these things, yeah? That's nothing. What I'm doing is nothing. Nothing in comparison to the stand that they made. Yeah. So I wholeheartedly believe everything I'm saying. Yeah. So I believe what I'm doing is righteous and I believe what I'm doing is the truth. So is all the problems that have come with it worth it? Yeah. Because that's what I'm... So when you're making all these decisions, are you thinking about these people as well? No, because if you think about it, if you think about consequence, you'll never bring change. So I always say... And the first time I thought about consequences, when I come out of court, I should have put that film straight out. But I'm thinking about the consequence. I need, maybe it's because I'm getting older now. I'm 40. But I didn't think about one. I always said when we're doing English defence league, no, 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 we don't. Th- if you think about what might happen, you're not going to do it. Yeah. Mm. If it's right, do it. So if it's right, do it. And we'll worry about the shit afterwards. And I might. Sit, and a few times I've been sitting there in jail like, oh shit. But everyone wants to kill me. Yeah, this ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, all, all, the, all, the, all the doors are getting booted and out. I'm thinking, nah, this ain't good, man. How is it in jail? Oh, it's bad. Or do you have to go um, PC, like protective custody? Nah, I'd never do that, bruv. Nah, nah I'd ne- I would never, everybody. ever do that, yeah? So okay. I walked into jails. I'll, I'll tell you, I, walk, I walked into Bedford Prison. Um, I looked at the, the screw on reception and I said, you got a brother? He said, yeah, Mark, Mark is his brother. I said, I know your brother. Because I could tell straight over, look at his face, it's my local jail. He goes, yeah, I goes, bruv. And then he goes, I goes, you know what's going to happen in here? I know what's going to happen in here. I'm in my life. There was not so many Muslims in there. Yeah? And then they said, okay. But I, I started asking, is, is he in here? Is it asking for my mates I grew up with? I said, is, who's in here? What wing are they on? And he's, he's, we, we established the majority of the Muslims were on A wing. Yeah? So he goes, I'm just going up to see the governor. He comes back down. He goes, I'm sorry. I said, what? He goes, you're going on A wing. I said, what? Let's go on the induction wing first. He goes, you're going on A wing unless you want to go on protective custody. I said, I ain't going on no protective custody, bruv. 
Why was you against it? I said, I ain't no fucking nonce. <laughs> I said, well, I haven't got nothing to it's be... It's true, you've a whole bunch of them. I haven't it? got nothing to be apologised for. I ain't got nothing to... I haven't done nothing wrong, yeah? So I'm not about to house myself and hide... So then I said, well, I'm not doing that. He goes, well, you're going on a wing. I said, all right, Sam. So as we started walking across there, I said, you ready, boys? Like to the screws. And he goes, well, I, goes, I hope you're fucking ready. And I, I mean, as I walk in, I'm shitting myself inside, yeah? And I walk in and everyone's out on the barriers and everyone's howling. You're yeah, like, fucking hell, Tommy Robinson's here. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. The whole place is going mad. I get put in my cell at 10 to 12, 12 o'clock's lunchtime, yeah? So I go to my cell. I go to the window. I say, if your prophet was here, he'd be on the fucking nonce wing. Yeah, the reality. Why, bro? Why, why not? Because no, no, I've got to call it on there. So the, and, and setting I've, the level. To I'm say going that. mad. Yeah, I'm going mad. And I heard there's some other black dude who's going, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Yeah, I, and they goes, "You're fucking dead." I said, "I've heard that for five years. I've had two black eyes." Yeah, you shit houses. And I'm going mad. Yeah, and I know when that door opens up, I'm on it. Right? Because and the only reason why is because if I wait, I'm fucked. I'm dead. Yeah, mm. they're gonna. There was a few smileys in there. They got 28 years from for, for killing in Milton Keynes. I thought. If, if I wait for them to get me in my cell, I'm not coming out. Yeah, I know I know that. So this is defence mechanism. I don't want to be doing this. I'm sitting there shitting myself. Yeah, But I'm screaming and screaming and screaming. So the door's open. So I come straight out into the cantina. I go, who's fucking Muslim? Yeah, And De- De- Dion, some uh, little gangbanger flute, who I'm friends with his brother as well. He goes, you're Gaxi, bro. I'm Muslim. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. And as, it, as he's done that, a white boy next to him called McDonald's. He goes, I'm Muslim. I was like, boom. And, so, and, and we've gone at it. And I haven't stopped, yeah? And then all the screws are coming, they've dragged... But I've only done this as self-mechanism, safety, yeah? Because I know I have to do this. Because then I'm, then I'm put down the block, yeah? I'm not, down on, I'm not on the self-protection. I'm then in the punishment section of the prison. But I've done that to the... Fa- to fa- I remember afterwards, Wesley Barker, who's another mixed race boy, he's got a big beard. And he's gone, what? He goes, oh, I'm not fucking Muslim yet. Because I grew up with all these boys as well, because we're yeah. all in Luton. And then um, I've gone back up to my cell, and I'm drenched head to toe. Yeah, drenched with, with buzzing like and I've gone to the window I'm laughing because everyone was saying I was dead 10 minutes before I was like I thought I was dead I thought I was dead I said I just tore up the tore up the canteen and then I've got and then, but then from there I've been dragged down to um, I slept down to the yeah. seg section of jail but I have only done that I don't want to do it. and the priest come and started on me after that the priest come in and started on me but I'm, I know what I've got to do to survive so in a position I'm coming out of there alive so whatever I need to do, I'll do what I need to do. Yeah, that ain't because I wanted to go in and just start a fight with the Muslim lads. But I thought if I get caught in my cell, I'm dead. I'm dead, and I know they're letting me go in that position. And my own pride would not let me be. I'm not. I ever asked them for protection, mm. but I am going to protect myself. So yeah. How long did you spend? Because you've obviously gone a few times. What was I've like the done... longest time you spent in there? Because I remember there was one time you come out and you weren't shaving. Or that, that, that wasn't even a long one. But I've done. That was Belmarsh, and Belmarsh was safe for me. Yeah. So I've done. I've done Bedford that time. Yeah. Was it, what um, cat is Bedford? I lost my teeth. Uh, Bedford's B cat. I, lost, I was put in Woodhill. I got battered in Woodhill. What's Woodhill? I know Belmarsh is there. Wood, Woodhill's A, maximum security. Okay. And I got fucking, I got battered, bruv. Locked in a room. But the Muslims didn't know I was coming in either. Oh, so it was by Muslim people? Yeah. Okay. They didn't know I was coming in. I see them look at each other and I was like, oh, bruv. <laughs> and then uh, I didn't even sit down. Door got locked. Boom. It just went off. I Damn. lost my teeth. I lost my teeth, but they were trying to get me killed in there, the, the, the system was, because mm. they were bringing me... So six Muslims, I was at the Old Bailey, six Muslims were sent to 30 years, and I stood up and said, uh, God save the Queen, yeah? They just got, but they got their 30 years for planning to Where kill me. Where was that? You was in um, this court? Was, I went to the court case because they were planning oh. to kill us, yeah? So I went to the court case, they got 30 years, six months later, I'm up for some stupid bullshit paper offence, yeah, at, at, at court, and they transfer me to Woodhill. I get brought in Woodhill... They bring it. The, the the screw says, um, "When they come to get you, do not leave this cell. Your life depends on it." I'm like, "What?" Because I'm telling you, don't leave this cell, son. Yeah. Hour later, he knocks with two other screws. He says, "Come on, you're going on B wing." I said, "I ain't going anywhere." He goes, "If you don't go anywhere, I'm going to give you a nick and you're going to face disciplinary." I said, "All right, sound." They were taking me to the six Muslims on the wing with the six Muslims. Oh, the same people. The same people. So I, in Peterborough, I got I got I had, I had a I got, I got taken to court. It's on twenty four hours in police custody. You can watch it on documentary. I got taken to court for alleged racial, racial assault in jail. Again, I was in for 10 days in that one. And, um, and they, they know what's going to happen. You put me on the wing with them lads, we know what's going to happen. But I will defend myself, which is what happened in that court case. I got done for defending myself. I got not guilty. Mm. But yeah, I've done, I've done 10 prisons. And I've done over a year of solitary confinement. What type of thoughts go through your head when you're in that cell? 
Especially just knowing, like, because obviously you, that's time by yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's so a lot you of solo get, time, right? It's a lot of time to think about everything, man. You question everything. But more, more so for me, it made me more determined. I thought, no, I'm... And then I become in a battle where, where was it even about what's right or was I in a battle with the system? Mm. Was I in a battle with the government? Was I in a battle with the police? Like, a lot of the time, man, I was doing things just to piss the police off. I had the police come to me, Scotland Yard to come to me, they, where do you want, we need to meet you. So I'm due to do a charity walk in London. Uh, and I'm going from A to B, yeah? Woolwich Barracks, I was going from. One place to Woolwich Barracks, which took me through East London. Mm. So the police rang me, so we need to see. I said, all right, meet me in Imac Grill, which is a Muslim restaurant in town. So I went and sat down in the restaurant. Two police officers come in. Muslims everywhere. Yeah? It's in Luton Town. And the cop was like, what are we doing here? So what do you mean, what are we doing here? He goes, what are we doing in here, Tommy? I said, it's a restaurant in the town centre. I said, oh, you mean because it's a Muslim restaurant? I said, it's where I live. Yeah. What do you mean? What am I doing here? I know the owners. Yeah. And we sat down and then they said, right, you're not allowed to, um, you're not allowed to walk past the East London Mosque. I said, what are you talking about? They said, when you're going to London tomorrow, we don't want you to walk past the East London Mosque. I said, I don't really care what you want. Yeah? I'm going to walk from A to B. If that takes me past the East London Mosque, which it does, I'll walk past the East London Mosque. I said, I walk past mosques every day. Look where I live. Yeah. What are you on about? And then they, they, but they didn't want me. So then the next day they nicked me on the border, Tower Hamlets, when I got to the border. Yeah. And then, so then I done a, then I done a charity walk around the entire perimeter of Tower Hamlets. But these sort of things were just then it was me against the police, which is what a lot of it went into with, in, with the, over the years. But when I was in jail, I had a, you're right, I have a lot of time to think, man, a lot mm. of time to evaluate, a lot of. Uh, Must be a dark time as well. Oh, bruv, man, I, I think I'm good company. Mm. Not twenty three and a half hours a day every day on my own for fucking five months. Yeah, that's crazy. Dead, bruv. Read any books? I did, yeah, the Quran. Did you? Yeah, someone sent me it's a Muslim outreach. Start to finish? Yeah, I dissected it, bruv. Mm. I dissected it. Dissected it. So they sent me it as a bit of a laugh, I think, trying to get me to convert, but all it done was make me read and understand what's going on. Mm. But I just, um, I read, I had a lot of mail as well. But I didn't, for what, again... I Hate mail or, like, love? A bit, bit of both? No, nah, ma- I mean, masses, you see, when I was in Belmarsh. I mean, like, I mean, I... I mean, every day, sacks. Mm. So I, it, it gave me, it, if it wasn't for me understanding how much bigger than me it was. So when I was covering these stories or highlighting these things, so many people felt affected by it, who, had, who were silenced due to their jobs, but they felt emotionally attached to the story or to me, that, that sort of gave me a, a belief to carry on, I guess. So yeah, hopefully for this silence, to, whenever... Alex decides to put it out or whatever, I don't end up sat in jail again because jail's a scary place for me, bruv. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. Yeah, especially for you. You ain't helping yourself, though. I'll yeah, be but honest. I'm just, but I'm just still telling the truth. You're fucked regardless, but, like, obviously, them comments, it's just, yeah. It doesn't matter, does it? it doesn't, I'm fucked Tommy, regardless. I'm Tommy Robinson. Yeah. So, but I'm still it. That's it. It's true. Even with Alex Jones, he's been silenced as well. Yeah, he's been silenced billions of pounds. Was he, he ever um, on YouTube really like that? I don't know. I yeah, feel like big, I only watched... He was big, but they deleted him. But then now they've just took him through the court. Same as what they've done with me. And they've hit him for billions, haven't they? Billions. Even trillion they want to hit him for. That's fine. Like, they just want to... Well, no, he was fucked with that. But like, yeah. that was fucked. But they, they, do wanna, they yeah, don't want... They're not just happy with so. silencing you or censoring you. They want to destroy you. So what do you think in that case? Like, in the case of someone saying... Something, should they be... Yeah, like, sued. Because he was sued for... Saying Sandy, Alex Jones said about things Sandy about family. I think it's a sad state of affairs because the reality is, can we trust our government? Can we believe there aren't false flags? No, I, I, I believe they do. I believe they allow terrorism. Do you believe the Twin Towers were blown up by 19 Saudis? Do you believe Me that? personally? Yeah. It seems very sketchy to say the least. So if we don't believe it, it what do you believe? Very it sounds and, and, then, and then why don't you believe it? Because they lie. Because mm. they keep lying. And they, and, it, and they didn't have the political... They didn't have the public's support to invade any other countries at that time, yeah? So then, Twin Towers get knocked down, let's invade Iraq, let's invade Afghanistan, let's do a big war on terror and blow everything up, yeah? And, and then you've got to support the people. Mm. So I don't trust them, and I think it's sad, because when that attack happened at Sandy Hook, Alex Jones doesn't trust them. There's so many discrepancies in many of the stories, and at the same time as these terrorist attacks and things happening, they're trying to take the guns or they're trying to inf- uh, take your rights. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a shit situation. It, it's a hard one because you don't really know what to trust, what to believe, what's real, no, what's fake, don't what's anymore. the agenda. It's a lot of confusion. Yeah. A lot of confusion. And you guys are definitely the people that are out here to question and fight to the end, you know, no matter what. 
No matter if that makes people hate you, <laughs> want to kill you, yeah. silence you. Yeah. You know, that's one As of those I said, things. We're still here. We're still here. I said with me, I'll happily sit down with anybody. I've not got an issue with that. Um, I'm all about facts as well. I'm not really an emotionally led person. I'm that's good because the whole everybody. of BLM was about emotion. Yeah, of course it was. The whole of BLM. Yeah, no, that, that, that was all emotion. If we actually sat down as black people and actually looked at the situation, looked at the organisation and everything, it would have just been a whole different thing. I'm, I'm allowed to say that now. Like, I feel like we've all accepted and no, no one pushes BLM anymore. But that's good, yeah? No one pushes but, but, BLM anymore. But when anymore, I, I said it... That. This you said that the worst time. I still say it to my mates. I'm going to cut you saying that, yeah? And I'm going to send it in my school group chat again. <laughs> say, fuckers, man. <laughs> I just said it at the wrong time. I was ahead of the yeah, curve. You said yeah. it at the wrong time. I was at the quick. time, everyone was still wearing BLM armbands. It was very live. And now, the, the Premier League don't wear it. It's no, just there's no Zaha. racism. There's a lot of footballers that stood up to it. Yeah, that's crazy. It's yeah, good. There's a lot of footballers that come forward and said, hold on. Oh, seriously? The yeah, yeah, they, cut, yeah, they, they broke the barrier because mm. they said, no, this ain't right. Yeah, yeah, on, on lots of issues. Yeah, lots of, lot, there was lots who else. Um, there was lots of black celebrities that started coming out. Actors. It's like, about time, man. Stop was it, the, um, what's her name? Uh, the Osborne, what's her name again? Uh, is it Sharon Osborne? Sharon Osborne. She, she gave, what was it, half a million to BLM, wasn't That's it? That's what I mean. And she said she wants her money back. Yeah, of course she wants her like money back. <laughs> you were lied to, you were fooled. Yeah, we got done dirty with that one. 100%. But um, what's, in the, what's the future got to hold for you then? What's your What's plans? the future? Uh, every time I make it, I, I just, mate, I've got two doc, two more documentaries I'm working on now. I don't know if you managed to watch The Rape of Britain, have you? I'll send you a link. So last year I made four films called The Rape of Britain. It's where I go after the men who have been raping the kids in Telford. So I sit down, I spent a year with 12 victims, heard their stories, we dissected their stories, done um, charts and graphs and uh, of all the names. We've got 250 odd names of men that raped and when the men were named by three of the girls that didn't know each other, they star in my documentary. So I went into their businesses. I showed where they showed that hey, this is who they are. This is the companies they're running in the town. And these are the allegations against them. I give them a right to reply. So they're exciting work because you get to see they become a blow my car up. They blew, they blew about 20 things up, these, these gang yeah, in Telford. They run the whole town. Run the whole town. Dirty little scumbags. Child raping scumbags. So... It's called The Rape of Britain. I've done episode one, two, three, and four. I'll, show, I'll send you links. So it's good. It's proper good journalism. Yeah? Mm. It's investigative journalism. We put trackers on their cars. We follow them. We find out everything about them. So is that something that you have like a passion for then, journalism? Yeah, I have a passion for giving a voice to people who have had their voice taken. And these girls haven't been believed for decades. Mm. And I believe them. And I want to give them an opportunity to... And, and, and I also have a passion for embarrassing and humiliating the men that have got away with raping children. So, and that's my area of, of where I'm at as a journalist. Um, yeah, but it brings me stress, man. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, it brings me stress. I'll man. be honest, for me, I would love, and I don't know, maybe in my little fairy tale land, even though I live in the real world as well, like for you to somehow have a better relationship with the Muslims. Obviously, yeah. you're never going to be, because me, I can, no, me I, and you, I, like, I, I like, can for sit example, with loads of Muslims now, yeah, as yeah. I do, and we'll have a good time, yeah? And mm. they'll probably say, he was all right, yeah? That doesn't mean I have to kiss ass of their No, religion. it's not about kissing ass with the religion. I'm just saying, because there's a lot of misconception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of Muslim people out here have a conception that no, I just you hate, hate them. Yeah, I know. Every single... Well, I, well, I so that's what I'm saying. Well, like, is there a way... Okay, well, you said it. So, yeah, I mean, I would hope that well, a lot of Muslims can watch this and they still probably won't like you because you're not really... You don't agree with what they agree with. And I guess it's their religion. But so, so what? They don't... We don't, we, no one's going to agree with it. It's like, get over yourselves, man. Mm. Same with me. It's like, look... But yeah... What do you reckon yeah. Tate for London Mayor? What do I reckon it will take? What do you reckon for Tate? For oh, London for Tate? Mayor? I heard, I'll see it hilarious. pop up on a video the other day. Tate, that, for Tate for Mayor would be... That would be interesting. <laughs> There'd be a lot of Bugattis out here. I, look, you know what? With him, I actually like him. I ain't going to lie. And I know a lot of people that know him personally and haven't like, met him and they've never really said anything wrong. He's cool. A lot of him is just... Tri he, he does triggering things. He says things on purpose to get a reaction. Once you kind of see that for what it is... You don't take everything too, like, Yeah, too personal. personally, man. It's like, mate. He's literally trolling you, look. Yeah, too, yeah. He's literally trolling you. Yeah, a mix of the two, yeah. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. What he I says, he believes I said that to my son. I said, son, do, do you think, like... Don't take everything literally. Yeah, yeah. One thing I would say that I don't... Like, I would love to sit down with him, only because I've seen there's a lot of young boys that are taking on too much of his thing, which I don't think is good. Yeah, I've seen it myself. That's just fucking kids, dangerous, bro. Bantering their sisters, isn't it? it? It's dangerous. Like, for example, I'll give it's you... Not, you're gone. Give I'll tell you, I'll give you one. So, like, in the gym, um, I don't even want... I'll be real. 
the guy was uh, what, what country is he from? I don't know what country he is from, but he's Muslim. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Because Tate's converted, he came into the um, jacuzzi. He was like, Tate's converted to Islam, and he started going off on one. And he was saying to me like, I'm a slave to the system. Because well, um, you ain't converted. No, no, nothing to do with his religion okay. per se. He was just saying, you know, because Tate's very like the Matrix, the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like talking like Tate. Yeah, but he don't know what he's talking about. But this guy was like working in security, like I've been working for my like it was crazy. And I in my head, and I did obviously I was checking him on things, but I was like, bro, this is scary. A lot of people are talking like he's they're Andrew Tate, they're not him. There's yeah, only yeah, one Tate. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. take a bit of it and say, he's okay. He's becoming like a prophet to many people. He is a prophet to a lot of people. That guy is a prophet to him. But I've That's but you fucked. see the positives, because I read the positives of people who are suicidal, who people's lives has changed, yeah. who people started going mainly through just health. Start yeah. going gym, be a better man, be the yeah. best version of you you can. I well, just think the only thing is some people taking it too literally. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've heard people, bro. Mate, say, I'll play you a little recording. It's my duty as a man. I said, bro, like, what do you do? Who are you? Like, I swear, that's what I said to someone. I was sitting at a table in the gym. They're just quoting his No hate to the guy and everybody that was there at the time. And they know how the podcast. I was like, you should record some podcast. I was like, it's my duty as a man to do this. My duty is that. And I said, bro, like, not in a rude way, but like, who are you? Like, what do you do like what is your thing? He's like, I work in tech. I said, Tech's a big world. Like, what do you do? Because the way he was, remember, Tate's multi millionaire claims to be billionaire. That is like, you're talking as if you've got the. Yeah. Let's be honest, most people don't have the facilities to talk like him and act like him. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's a lot. There's a I've big misconception. My, I recorded my son's conversation. I was going to say, I recorded my son yesterday at the Christmas dinner table with yeah. my man. What do you say? Talk to his sisters about what he's going to do when he's older and how he's going to be. And it's all Tate. Everything he's saying is Tate. Yeah. And everything he's saying, and, he, and, he, and then my daughter said, Sam, and he goes, Listen, you're just going to meet some man who's going to provide for you. <laughs> <laughs> that is the Tate effect. And then my mum was like, yeah. My mum said, Stephen, if you was ever talking like this, I'd slap you. Yeah. <laughs> Tate needs to see that because but, that's funny. Said, but, he, but Tate put a figure out saying, When you're at your Christmas dinner table, Tell their, tell your family. I saw this. that. I saw that. I yeah, saw yeah, that. It's funny. Uh, Again, it? um, he's trolling. I saw. It, I retweeted it though. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. yeah, he's a troll. It's funny. Yeah. The only problem is that some people take it literally, yeah, but, and that, that but, gets but, dangerous. What, 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 that but, does get dangerous. What will taking literally be a better man? Go to the gym. Be healthy. Be the best version of you. Fuck the matrix. But bro, I've free. got someone that works in security. Who's ten pound an hour? No offense, telling me to like I'm being enslaved and I'm in the <laughs> matrix. What the fuck, bro? Like he, do you know what I'm saying though? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's mad. So for me and all of us, I think everybody in the jacuzzi at the time was like a boss. He was the only person actually working for someone in the Matrix. And I was like, he's this his, guy's he's crazy, 60 bro. 60-second Tate video in the morning. Yeah, no, nah, that's it. Now, nah, but shout out to Tate. I think it's, yeah, give and take and you're not Tate. That's all I'll say. But... Yeah, for the kids, that's cute. Like, that's mad funny. Like, if it's if funny, my ten year old son come it's up funny, to me and bro. said something like, "You're gonna get a guy that's gonna provide for you," yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be dying. But th- that guy was older than me. I'm 24. That guy was f- mid 30s, bro. That's fucking scary. Like, that's nah, worrying. Yeah. Take it all with a pinch of salt, you know. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I agree. But um, no, it's been great getting you on. Cool, bro. I've appreciated your um insight. Even watching the thing that was very insightful. Um, yeah, I don't know when it's gonna come out. Some point. Where it's gonna come out? No idea. Um, I think you've even done yourself I'm sure you've probably done this before there's no way I believe you've actually because if we just like summarise everything um, you said you burnt the swastika right? mate burnt the swastika I mean like you've got I, black I, I, best I, 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 made a vi- I made a video yeah calling out this, this, remember I'm a little little white dude yeah, yeah. N- North East Infidels I made a video saying listen after we had the big demonstration where we all had a big vo- fight with them I said listen I'm sure I'm fat I'm five foot six yeah if you've got a problem come to Luton they come to one of them. Come to I'm out in London. I get a phone call from our where our football hooligan pub is from the landlord saying, Yeah, there's some kids from Newcastle. He traveled down from Newcastle. Yeah, he, uh, someone said, What? He goes, Yeah, some lad in, from Newcastle's come down here. Wants you to come to the pub. So I got a train back. I've walked in the pub and, it, and he'd come down. And he goes, I watched your fucking video. He goes, I was raging. So I've come down here. I said, You're North East Infidels. <laughs> he, go, he, he goes, Yeah. He goes, and now I'm me, I'm not as angry. I said, shut up, get out of the back of the pub, bruv. And we've gone out the back of the pub and knocked the shit out of each other. Yeah? We've knocked the shit out of each other. And afterwards, I, sh- I shook his hand because he-, he come down. So when it comes to far right or Nazis or racists, I think, I've gone out there. Yeah? I've put my face on the line. I've, co- I- I've burned their flag. Do you know, do you know Nazi Nick McGregor? <clears throat> Google Nazi Nick McGregor. Yeah? Nazi Nick McGregor, I didn't know who he was. I get a phone call when I'm leading the English Defence League from the Nazis who are trying to take over. He says, you have till tonight to hand over the domain and the passwords and all this. And some German dude. I said, shut up, you German muck. I said, like, I said, didn't you try this about fucking 60 years ago when you had an army, you prick? Fuck off. And, <laughs> and then I looked up who he was. He tried to overthrow the South African government, this geezer, man. He's a proper, like, proper famous neo-Nazi. Yeah? Mm. I think I've called on them all. I've told them all 
I've, I've annihilated their ideology of racism. I've annihilated their mindset, annihilated it. I'm hated by them, but I'm still getting called it mm. because it benefits it. Because people who don't want to have the debate around the issue is just like, oh, he's racist. Oh, then they don't have to have a debate. Mm. They You've got black friends. My, yeah. Is your best, isn't your best friend a black person? Yeah, loads of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Them. Do you like black women by I any went. chance? What's that? Someone actually asked me, do you like black women? Do I like black women? Yeah. Which black women? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Do like, you how, would you date like a black woman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but and yeah. Cause I saw a video. You said you uh, went to like a Caribbean, like a. I went to a bashment do. Yeah, you went to. A I bash- didn't know a bashment was. Wh- went, when was that? Two years ago. Okay. I was in London. Um, when was it? I was in London, and I said, I think I was like a rice crispy in a bowl of cocoa pops. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, it, at, but I saw the fact everyone was like, yeah, they "What must the have been fuck? What are you doing here?" Mm. And I had people, come, but no one gave me a hard time. No, do you know what surprised me? After Black Lives Matter, I thought I wouldn't be able to walk the streets with young black lads. Oh, you'll be all right. Nah, cool. Everyone was cool. Right. Everyone was cool. I went everywhere. Right. A lot of cool. it is internet stuff, for one. Internet hype. Two, I'll be honest, like, if you even look, they will probably do something to me before they do to you. Mm. That's just the truth. Like, that is something that will just happen. I don't know what that is down to or the hate that is ingrained. It's weird. I don't know. But, I don't like, mind, generally, man. you don't see young black guys... Stabbing white guys, usually black on black, black, on in, black in, in London. So you'll it's be cool, madness, bro. You bro. can it's say whatever and do whatever. Olds, you can say and do whatever. They probably nothing will probably happen to you. It happened to me before, but um, yeah. So even with that, uh, yeah, you got black friends. You chill with black people. You grew up with black people. I'm from Luton Town, so you need to know. Yeah, I'm from Luton Town. Even in the case of um, you said there was a case in I can't remember the area, but the white girl that lied about the grooming gang. Yeah, she's lying, man. Yeah. Yeah, she's like... And you stood up for these people. She's ruined their lives, bro. And she... Yeah, and you she's said ruined she... Her, yeah. She's ruined... Her, John, please, stand. Please give me... Again, please give me a condition not to... I weren't allowed to enter Lancashire to prevent me telling the story of it. Mm. It's mad. But she has... She's obviously got problems. Something's not right, but her words cannot be taken that these men have done these crimes because... Not of her word. Because yeah. her word is not worth anything, if I'm honest, when you look at what she's saying. She's falsified evidence previously. On multiple men. So, those but people, even in that case, my point is, is that like you've man, I just want gone to tell against the truth. that. Yeah, I want to you've tell the truth. against the I've whole a, yeah, idea because yeah. remember, some people think that you're going to these. When guys, I left the English defense, when I left the English defense league, I left sitting with Muslims either side. Yeah. yeah. So and I, we did need to find a solution, but I don't believe lying is a solution. Nah, for real. So even with that, it's really a case of just getting to the bottom of the case. Get to the bottom and tell the truth. Mm. So, and I make mistakes along the way, as everyone does. Hey, but, you're human. Yeah, that's it. That's part of it. Um, one thing I know, you definitely aren't with Islam. You don't agree with that. That's just your thing. You're going to stand on that hill, die on it. We all die anyway. Possibly, bruv. Not saying by them, but I'm just saying you'll die on that hill, you know, so say yeah. it. Yeah, don't you're take any more. sign up to the real life AI, I think. That's yeah, what, AI, um, yeah. That's what his thing's called, right? This video's great, bro. Okay, 40 pounds. Hey, but no, I like him, Do you know how much he's making? Oh, millions, man. Millions monthly. Millions 50 monthly. 50 pound a month, 180,000. What's that, nine mil a month? Come on. Crazy. Come on. Crazy money. Yeah, he said he's a billionaire now as well. In theory. I guess with all the... Once you work out everything in terms of his... And you put um, it here and you put it there and you invest it here and you're making money there. Yeah. He's a clever man, bruv. So... Ah, that's funny. And he's got so much power. Now? Yeah, he's And they tried to power. cancel him. And what I like about it is they tried to cancel him and he's gone... Oh. Through the roof. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, you can't stop him. It's a big fuck you. Which, yeah. is, which was needed to cancel culture. 100%. 100%. Man. He's wrote his name down in history, so in fair play. Definitely. Are we done? Yeah. Cheers, lads. It's been great having you on anyway, bro. Cheers, bro. Appreciate you coming down. It was no good, because to be fair, we actually delayed it a little bit due to loads of different things. Yeah. I think it was like one or two times we changed it. I just super glued that in. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not joking. Are you allowed to say how that happened? Super, super glued. No, uh, no, it didn't happen anything bad. Nothing bad, man. No, nothing bad. Fair enough. So. Great. It's right, been great cool. having everyone on. Um, don't forget to drop a like because that lets YouTube know that you like the video. Hopefully this does not get shadow banned. God knows what's going to happen, but we'll just go with it. Stick on Rumble as well. You on Rumble? Nah. Come on, you listen to tape, man. You're oh, still yeah, in the Matrix. I'm still in the Sky, Matrix. Get on Rumble. I'm still in the Matrix. Get on Get her. Are you on Get her? Uh, Yeah, that's what I messaged you. Oh, yeah, yeah, you messaged me on there, yeah. yeah. So is that like a popular app now? It's getting there, mate. 7 million users and it's... Look what I've done. 7 million users and, um, and it's free speech. Yeah. I can go live. It's good for me. Because I was, I didn't have a voice anywhere, so at least I got a voice. Nah, that's true, so. definitely. Yeah, so make sure to subscribe. Um, your get will be in the description as well. Cool. Appreciate everyone watching, and yeah, we're out. Peace. Safe. safe.